reported live on RCTV, and you can find that on Comcast Channel 22 or Verizon Channel 33. Um, the videographer for tonight is Niles, and you can check www.rctv.org for more information and for replay times. Um, our agenda um, oh, nice. basically under uh, topics of discussion, there are only two tonight. Uh, Gray Coach Lane and Strawberry Hill Lane. Azalea Circle has been continued in the notice of intent um, for Castellano uh, at 1503 Main Street, and there are two of them have been um, continued. So I just wanted to let um, folks that came in for those items know. Do you know when the um, Circle will be continued two, two weeks from now, or? It's continued, it's going to be continued until December 12th. Okay. Chuck, is that is that true? I mean, are they coming in on the 12th? Or they, did they just so, ask to continue? Uh, the reason why they asked to continue is they just received the response to the uh, memo from the engineering department. So they'd like some time to um, answer all those questions. Okay. Okay. Uh, the first item on the agenda is a request for determination of applicability for 41 Gray Coach Lane, Map 46, Lot 48, Nivens. So is uh, Mr. Nivens or Ms. Nivens available? Okay. Um, we had a site inspection, I think on, was it Tuesday? It was poor. Yes, it was Tuesday. Um, yes. And I think um, we asked a few questions. I understand that the dog run, which is on the <coughs> left side of the house, you'll put in a, um, a, a small uh, um, door for the animals to get yeah. in and out, right? Okay. Um, would you like to explain your project, please? Sure. Happy to. Okay, it's, thank uh, you. The dogs are both older, 10 and 13, and they've, uh, the manual is only known with this kind of setup. So going through a dog door to go out onto a series of steps to go down to uh, do their business on rounded gravel, it's very spoiled. Um, it's the only thing they've known. They've recently been getting used to being on a leash and trying to get used to that whole thing. They're doing okay with that, but uh, this is uh, the way they like to do it. They come and go at their will. For the 10-year-old, she likes to go out at 3 o'clock in the morning, which is not great for walking a dog. Um, but, uh, so what we have is really a, a small uh, run area uh, surrounded by, on two sides, a uh, chain link fence, and the entire um, backyard um, is with a, a board fence. Um, on either side with a back perimeter um, uh, bounded by a um, six foot chain like that. So the, so the, um, um, the fences on the side yards, those are wooden? Yes. And how tall will they be? Six foot. Six Cedar. feet. And, and then in the back is a chain link? Yes. And that will be how tall? Six feet. Six feet, okay. We had the current property we have in Winchester almost exactly the same situation, wetland, conservation land. Uh, the chain link fence disappears into the, into the woods, so it's nice for seeing things. We did have a deer jump over the fence at, at four feet, so we went up another foot. And uh, we would rather not have repeat that, but uh, that's basically the reason for the design as it is. You had some questions, Anika. Um, There's not going to be any concrete poured down, right? On the on the uh, anywhere uh, on the run? The no, no. It's, it's uh, what we're, I think we put on the description. It's it's uh, weed cloth to keep the weeds from coming up, and uh, with um, what they call pond stone, which is kind of a rounded edge gravel. Mm -hmm. So that's basically it. Maybe. Um, Footings underneath the post for it, but it's a very small deck. It's five by seven feet. Do you, are you going to have to grade that? Because it goes down. So. It goes it's down a hill. Slope, but we're trying to keep it so that unlikely that we have to. Okay. 
think the grading was the question I had, or maybe it had to do with a, a different site visit. I think it, remember that was the was side that it was. Was. goes down. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a walkout basement, which we like, um, but uh, at the, that point, it's about 15 feet from the very top of that house to the bottom end of it, so we don't have to grade it. And Chuck, do you have any questions? Um, yes, I was, so we got the plans from your builder today, and I have one of them up on the board right now, and it shows a platform and what looks like some stairs. So I was wondering what the stairs, are the stairs still going to be installed? Yes. What the footings are, and... Um, I have a picture How of, high they are. of the one we had recently done mm -hmm. in, in Winchester. Very similar design. It's, it's basically a couple of footings just to warm up. And uh, like I said, it's five by seven. Um, we actually are gonna have that go off to the side. Um, so the stairs are gonna come off so that when they come out of the dog door, which is this wide, about 11 inches, 11 to 15 inches, and by about 20 inches tall, that's the door. And they just come go straight up down the side steps. So I think they're what you have in there is probably one, two, three, maybe four uh, footings that we've placed in there. I did notice that the um, the plan didn't show footings, and it also mm -hmm. just FYI the plan. The builder said there was a deck involved, but the plan doesn't show a, a new deck on it. So actually, I don't know if I should give you the plot plan, but I had them pulling in the dirt by that plan we had done, which was done after the application process. This thing that they're, they're talking about building here, isn't that outside the 100 foot anyway? Not the fencing. No, this thing that he's talking about here for the dog. This thing yeah. is outside the 100 foot, but I did want to clear it up for um, for my purposes because I do have to sign off on the building permit and it did just come in today. So since he was here, I figured I'd ask him. Okay. This area, the 100 foot uh, w would end at the corner house. This is right. the corner of the house right here. Yep. I'll just flip back to the other one. Um, so the 100 foot zone is just right up to the corner of the house and then yep. out in the front here is where the dog door is. But I, that's the reason why I asked the questions. Good point, Dave. So the, jur so the work happening in our jurisdictional area is predominantly board fencing on um, the abutting sides of your property and then chain link fence in the back with with uh, two two gates three gates three gates one in the back two in the front um, I just want to just mention because you do have a gate um, at the end of I'm assuming that the back gate goes to the end of your it's gonna be along the back of your lawn and it's probably it's not going to extend that's my you know, I I see this plan, but I and I walked out there, and I, I'm guessing it's at the end edge of your lawn. I just want to make sure that that's your intent. Yes, it's at the edge where the, okay. the mulch is. There's a large yep. rock that yep. we talked we talked to Chuck about yep. fencing, so the rock can be on the inside. My wife likes the look of it, so. Yep. I, I do want to emphasize as a as a future landowner here or current current to be future landowner here that um, that the the dragging of yard waste and like dumping of it, it back there not allowed. I understand. Okay. 
Yeah, I actually it's have a person clearing a path for that. I'm assuming this goes through on Friday, and, and he is the current landscaper and knows that there's no way he can put anything back there. So we're understood that that's well, not going to be happening. I'm glad to hear that. It's a common problem throughout town. Um, I just want to make sure it's said so that you're not caught by surprise if we show up and we say, you dumped some extra stuff, you got to pull it up and you got to dispose of it appropriately. So Mr. Nivens had the uh, extreme pleasure of having a, a site walk with me prior to buying the house. And I mentioned that to him and he was able to get the, the owner to do some cleanup that was there. Oh, so he's gone through that process already. Great. So Glad that's why it, there wasn't anything for us to look at. So it's very tidy. Did you look at the yards next door? Uh, no, there's there a pretty big yards in that area. I mean, it wasn't. I mean, I did walk all through the back, and and there was there was things back there, oh, but oh, we weren't. I was kidding, Jeff. On those properties. <laughs> We, we do. Oh, that wasn't an opportunity to get some more we do. clean up. So where to go? going? <laughs> we do look. I okay. don't want to see filling. All right, so that, here we are. This is just a fence, and inside the fence, there's a 15 by 20 dog run. Is that it? Yeah, yeah 15. Um, the application's in the building department right now, but we have, and the land has been surveyed, so that should not be, also be an issue. Any other questions from the commission? Hearing none. Audience. I, I was going to ask. Oh, I thought you said. I asked for the commission. Are there any comments from the audience? And if there are, please state your name and where you live. And hopefully you signed into um, a sign-in sheet. And if not, uh, I think there's one in the back. Hearing none. I'm okay, <laughs> so uh, the steps are if, if we approve the building department will look at this plan. They need to look at side yard setbacks for structures on the side of the house, and but they will not be looking at the fence, from my understanding. Uh, what about um, spacing? Um, under the fence. Under the fence. So fences. typically with a chain link fence, we consider that animal passage. Okay. Um, it's, I mean, you know, I consider animal passage meaning, you know, small, small animals, field mice, things like that, uh, not, uh, you know, not raccoons. So, with the with the chain link fence, I think that qualifies. If you guys right. disagree, you know. yeah, raccoons can get over chain link fence. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was like it's not even there. Raccoons, rabbits, anything. <laughs> I move we issue negative determination. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Let's get that check. I don't know if you want to extend yeah. that to the applicant. What that means. Maybe you know. So this would be good. So we want to close and then we want to issue. So you need to do. I move we close the request for determination of applicability for. Um, 41 Gray Coach. 41 Gray Coach Lane. Second. All those in favor? And when will we be able to pick no, that? No, no, oh, so you know. We did it backwards. Fine. Then. No, I'll it's, accept that. It's all done. <laughs> okay. So uh, we prepared, prepared the next meeting. Okay. And we'll sign that. Does he still have to wait until the next one? Can get it ten days from now. Now he has to wait until we prepare it. Okay. Even though it was negative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're we're skipping uh, meeting this month. Mm. So it's right. going to be extra right. long. So I could prepare prepare it. And you guys could we could, we could set up down. a meeting during uh, next Tuesday, and you could sign it. Yeah, you do that. When do you plan on moving into the home? 
Right. Right. Because the thing is, if we wait, make him wait a month, he's got. makes sense. He's got to bring the doggies out to walk the dogs instead of getting moving on. Right. Making the accommodation for the dogs. I'm just thinking, just for a timeline for him, for him moving in a new house to accommodate. Who could do, could the you dogs. ask him into town hall tomorrow? Yes. I don't have um, a problem doing that. Yep, yeah, I can do that. Bob? It's been a daily vigil for me lately. I have no problem being here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll yeah. uh, prepare it and uh, we can sign it tomorrow. Okay. okay. Uh, just make sure it's after 10. And it's fine. Yeah, so anytime after 10. If you come early, you bring coffee. Okay, and then, then you can pick that up tomorrow. And then you have to wait 10 days before you may start the work. Wait 10 days? Mm-hmm. Right about the ground, please. So. What's so you have to come, will you be in town tomorrow to pick this up? I can certainly be here tomorrow. Yeah, if you can get here before 1 o'clock, I could hand that to you and just give you the instructions that could go with it, and you'll understand the, the waiting period and all that. Okay. Nice guy. Chuck, one thing with, with an RDA, there is no 10 day appeal. I don't believe so. This is an RDA, not an NOI. Right. Well, it, it actually. It's up to you guys, but you, I didn't think there was a 10 day appeal following an RDA with a negative interpretation. So it's close, but not exact. Um, so what it is, is that there is a 10 day appeal, but it's at the applicant's. Um, you know, if, if he decides to move forward with the work, it's at his own risk. So it, it does carry the appeal, but if you want to uh, uh, take on the risk of someone appealing, then have to, having to, uh, you know, redo the work. So that, that part's up to you. So. Excuse me. Can I make a statement? Sure. What, in your name, sir? My name? I have a bad back, so please bear with me. Okay. Your name, sir? My name is Paul, K-N-G-G-A-N-G-E. -G -G -E. mm -hmm. I am the owner of 49 Great Coach. And this would be Scott's the house that's to the left of it. Mm-hmm. Looking at Scott's house would be. And to the left of it, that's my home. It shows on the mats. I have no problem whatsoever with an appeal. I won't be making any appeal based upon what's being said. I hope that Scott gets his equipment on those Okay. So anyway, for the record, I'm full on this. No problem. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Um, the next item on the agenda, agenda is a notice of intent. Um, for 20, 125 and 126 Azalea Circle, Map 23, Lot 125 and 126 K Street Realty, LLC. And uh, public hearing is um, now opened and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40 as amended, and the Reading General Bylaws, Section 7.1. Hearing will be conducted in the following manner. Applicant will pr present the proposal. Commission will receive reports. Um, uh, from technical advisors, other town departments, commission will address questions and comments to the applicant. And then the public will be given the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant. And it should be directed to the chair. And uh, when you do, give your name and address before your comments or questions are presented. Excuse me. Uh, this is the one we... I skipped, you skipped one. We're, we're continuing this. We're continuing this. Oops. Sorry. All right. Uh, then we have to, uh, don't we need to um, vote to continue that? Well, it's actually the next one is 8 Strawberry Hill Road. So we can continue this one when it comes up in its order. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was reading the wrong agenda. It was Notice of Intent 270-0710, 8 Strawberry Hill Lane, Map 7, Lot 192, St. Pierre. Um, and what I read um, on the script stands, um, 
And at this time, I'd like to introduce members of the Conservation Commission, starting on my right. Bob Hayes. David Panette. Anika Scanlon, Vice Chair. Rebecca Longley, Chair. Carl Ciccone. Ch Chuck Taroni, Conservation Administrator. And uh, do we have representative? Uh, my name is Jack Sullivan. I'm owner of the Sullivan Engineering Group. And I'm here with the two property owners, Michelle and Philip St. Pierre. And just so you know, uh, Michelle and Philip have been owners of this property uh, for the last 18 years. Um, and what they're seeking to do is construct an addition to their existing single family home, also, an extension of a deck in the rear yard. They're also looking to construct an in-ground swimming pool, it'll be a salt water pool. Uh, they're also looking to construct a shed to accompany that pool, and it'll be a paper patio associated mm -hmm. with the pool itself. Um, we did the survey. Norse environmental flag, the wetlands, is an isolated wetland to the rear of the property. It's jurisdictional under your local bylaw, not under the, uh, the state code. Um, as some of the commission members may recall, this formerly was a vernal pool. It was decertified. Um, so if you look at the St. Pierre's existing home, you can see how it's in a lot of shape. It's kind of, it's kind of, it has some jogs in it, and that was because of the formal vernal pool. Now that that doesn't exist, they have to basically square up their existing home and regain use of their yard. Um, in doing so, there'd be three trees greater than six inches in diameter to be cut. They're outside of the 25-foot uh, you know, disturbance zone to, to the isolated wetland. Um, all infrastructure, the pool, the patio, the addition, the shed, they'll all be outside the 35-foot you know, structure zone. Um, for mitigation for some of the increase in pervious surfaces for this lot, they are proposing a 500-gallon dry well to be installed to capture the runoff of the addition. Um, and we did provide a planting plan to mitigate for the impact of the removal of three trees. Uh, the landscaping is shown, uh, but in summary, um, they're looking to plant nine trees total and six shrubs and then uh, um, a number of plantings. They may look to do more than that, but um, depending how this comes out when we look at it, but that would, this is the minimum that they would be proposing. Um, if you did perform a site wide, I know some of you did come up to the site. When the vertical pool did exist, there were granite markers that were set at the limit of work line from the vertical pool. We're showing those granite markers now to be reset along the 25 foot no disturbance zone. So uh, there's four granite markers shown permanent, permanently delineated the, the 25 foot buffer. Um, there's only minor grading changes proposed. Um, Behind the pool area, you can see how we blended the 242 contour. Uh, and then the majority of plantings take place between the 35 and 25 foot no disturbance zone. The idea being to the right of the house, that, that'll be a grass area, so they'll still have some uh, open area outside of the house and pool where they can have some open yard. And we did show a location as well, so we located behind the shed. And we're showing the full patio of the constructed with papers. And I'll turn it over to the commission for any questions you might have. I see the pavers, Jack. Oh. Are these large boulders? On, on the far edge of the pool? Yeah, the, those would be, the, that's just like a, um, a stone coping edge to the pool. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're kind of like boulders just set along the edge of the pool. It's more of an aesthetic look. The 40-inch uh, tree that you proposed to take down, is that a maple? Was that a maple? It, it's a hardwood. It's might be an old. I didn't see any oak leaves underneath it. I saw maple leaves under it. It's huge, I, and I couldn't. It is. I, I couldn't see any oak leaves. No, I only saw maple. But um, they've had problems with limbs on that tree. Uh, I saw where it was limbed on the left side. The two two limbs. So there's a major concern for them, you know, with, with, with 
they've had a number of limbs come down, and now that the pool's going in, they, it would become a safety issue. And it is a big tree, and it's huge. I know it's a specimen tree, but they are proposing nine trees to go back. So, in stepping away from that 40 inch for a second, there were additional tree plantings in the backyard that are not shown on this plan that are where the pool is now. Right, right behind and the patio, there's some like arbor mighty that they planted that yep. grew up over time. I did, and they, they are tall, but I, they didn't appear to be greater than six inches in diameter, so I didn't show those. Um, and even the, the tree lines out here, you know, and there's a lot of saplings and stuff that are inside of there, but they're all like, you know, two to four inch saplings that are six inches in greater. Oh, I didn't think, I didn't measure them, Yeah. but I didn't think they were two to four inch saplings. But do you remember, Dave? Yeah, they're all substantially smaller than six inches. You think so? Okay. Definitely. You have some pictures from um, the applicants did a uh, tree policy permit last year, and uh, we have some pictures at that time from from um, what they had done. So you can see some of that, some of what's going on in the back there. Do you know what side of the house this is on? Uh, Alright, so here's the neighbor's yard in this area. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So that was happening. In front of the house, there's again some trees. I mean, I think this is what you're talking about, this size tree. And here's the side of the house. Yeah. Looking at, um, is it 8 yeah. Google, 16 or something? Yeah. 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 So we were like construction axes. Would that be anything else? So if you look behind disturbed it, or trampled or cut down for that? There's a lot of saplings. I think they're cutting saplings. You know, it's it's just, just to, to, sure to be able to line, build the pool. Jack, um, on the right hand side of the house, where the tree line is, that's where those saplings are, and those you're going to cut those down. Those are going to be cut down, and is that your construction access? Yes. So that would just really be no other major six inch plus trees, right, in there. Then. And the um, the twelve and the eighteen inch trees back there. Is there any reason why you're cutting those down? Yeah, that was a good question. Because they didn't look like they were leaning. They weren't that big, remember? Well, the 40 inch isn't leaning towards the house either, but. Well, there's one limb that. There's one, there's. Yeah, on the. It, was, it wasn't leaning to the house. It was, no. It was no, no. in the direction of it. It's house. in the direction. There's one huge limb on mm -hmm. the left-hand side of that tree that I could see could be a problem, and that could have been limbed. Could be limbed. So Jack, you're saying this, you're going to do construction entrance, but that's that's not on this plan, right? Right. No, the, the construction access to, to, to construct the pool and do the addition to the right side of the house. And you're going to have to take down these trees that I'm looking at on the screen now. No. No. Oh. Okay. No trees are going to get taken down for the construction access. No. So it's it, okay. It would be in the area where the lot is here. Yeah, that makes more sense. So the, the 18 inch maple, I'm going to call them all maples, uh, that's on the property line, is that, it's, it's just below this picture, what was the condition of that tree and why is that coming down? It seems to be far away from the project and it's only on the property. The trees. I just, I, I when I, with, with what I met with Michelle and, and Philip, those were the three they asked to come down. And, I informed them. They knew about your policy because they had gone through the removal work in 2017, so that's why I said we want to get back more than three and they're giving back nine. The idea was just to open it up, open 
of the yard and came to that area. So, so is the yard going to be finished to the right of the house? Is it going to be all... So all that vegetation, the intent mm -hmm. is to just replace that whole area from the road back to the 35-foot line with, with lawn? Yes. Because that isn't, that isn't on this plan. I don't know if it's in the report. Um, and the fencing, what is the extent of the fencing? Is it that green line? Yep, it's the green line. I just put back the site plan for the Sure. Yeah, so you can see it pretty clearly there. So yeah, it goes right around, around here. Goes here. Right around yeah, I see it. I see it. Right along the rear line. Yeah. Back yeah. the side line into the house. And how much fill is going to be disturbed? I mean, you're going to have to. So, so basically, you're going to construct the pool without touching that 242 line until you get to the edge of the pool. Correct. That's sort of flush with the right side of the house. And then... I guess I guess I'm not so clear about what the finished grades of that is that is that whole area between the house and the right property line is that all going to get like grubbed and like it, then is it go back to the existing grades but then they'll remove the, you know the saplings they'll have to clear any of the roots strip the topsoil come in with new mold and then and then see it but they would end up matching the grades that are there now with, within a few inches. So was that in the narrative? Did yeah, because that wasn't. I don't believe so. Because we need. I I would have liked to more clearly review that when I was on at the site and the condition of the 18-inch maple. Um, I can tell you, I was I was hoping that those three trees could remain and become uh, like the buffer to the pond. I, mean, I mentioned that when I was out there. That was just my thought. I, it, it just seemed like those trees and other trees are about the same elevation around the pond, and then it's kind of clear. I mean, I'd like to kind of create some natural area for the pond to um, maybe survive and have some habitat around it because if this is going to be turned into a, a lawn um, you know there has there has to be uh, you know a, a, an area where you know the uh, vegetation is allowed to be natural so that was that was one of my concerns um, we've asked for a landscape plan um, with projects that have less uh, action in the backyard than this and uh, it's a kind of a new policy you probably weren't here on a couple but we've got landscape plans on the last couple um, when this much work is going on it's easier to understand you know what's coming out and what's what's staying and then detail on the fence uh, and then that wildlife habitat access now Again, sometimes that just happens because of the contours of the land and there's an open spot and things can get in and out. That's that's going to be fine, but if there's not one there, you'd have to create something. I know the 40-inch tree for the owners, they want that gone. The other, the other two we could talk about, you know, if they're in good shape and we need to save those, they would like to get rid of them, but... The 40 inch, and if you look, there's another huge one here. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So the, the tree canopy from those two are big, but they, they, that, that 40 inch one is giving them problems. They, they've had limbs come down, and those limbs are like the size of trees that they're going to have. So at a minimum, they want to get that tree out. I have another question, Jack, on the, the fence um, in the back. There was like a row of 
it almost looked like a stone wall, but it wasn't. There, there are large stones. Oh, yep. And it was almost like a shelf, then it goes down. Are you putting, it seemed like it was in the area of that fence. Yep. And you don't show those those features on this plan, so I just wondered. I probably where you can see that the, the contoured lines get close to one another. That's probably in the area right where the fence is. Um, I, I didn't pick up any of the stonework there, but that's probably why the, the, the grade sounds like it drops off pretty quickly right after that point. So you're going to have a problem with the fence? Putting in the fence? But could you move the fence so that it was at the top of those stones? Sure. You know? Yeah. So it would be it would be closer located, to the but, it'd be uh, closer to the two forty two that exists, not your drawn although yeah. it would ultimately probably be finished it's closer to the 242. Yeah. Can you highlight the lawn area that you're just I can't I guess yeah. visualize yeah. the lawn here's the edge of the house patio yeah. those were on the other side and of the street these are all our plants and maybe sound yeah. yeah. I think so as he's this saying, area the all fact that there is this drop is because those stones are in current chuck in there that is just an understory is that yeah I wasn't there I'm sorry do you have an idea of what's there now? I mean, I can get this on um, MapGeo. So it's quite a bit. Can't get you real long. Mm. Um, do you, just while they're looking at a quick question, do you happen to know the, the final um, elevation of the pool patio? Give me some sense of what that elevation is going to be. 243. Okay. Um, mm. So will that require a, a wall on the set? Is north? North. Uh, well, the back edge of the pool, they'll have the, the, the boulder. Oh, the boulder there. Yeah. Go yeah. To 242. Mm -hmm. So um, those boulders will provide yeah. that transition. That pool is pretty right up against the 35 foot is there but it seems to be kind of spaced away from the existing patio pavers is there a way to pull it back closer to the house no, yeah, no? That's to be 10 feet away from the house mm -hmm. yeah, yeah that's what the 10 feet oh, is. gotcha um the proposed shed are there footings on that a, a slab a no it'll be on crushed stone it'll be on crushed stone so it might be cement blocks to level it up, but it will not be a foundation. Okay, so like a foot of crushed stone or two feet of crushed stone or yeah, what, what are we looking at? Typically with a shed, I just put one in. I, I get eight inches of crushed stone as my base, and then they put a couple cinder blocks, flat cinder blocks to level it off and put the shed right on it. Okay. Um, but it's not a permanent foundation. It's not like a poor concrete foundation. Mm -hmm. Is there um, something that can be done um, to manage or um, rehabilitate the 40-inch tree so that it does continue to provide slope stability and habitat for that area? So the, the trees that I, I guess think we would be open to if we can get rid of the forty and we get to the twelve or fifteen and, and if those look in good shape, the you know, mm -hmm. owner still might want to have someone look at those to make sure they're in very good shape. But I right away when I met with them, they'd say that forty inches that I can all of them. It's it's been scary. Yeah. Yeah. They're called widow makers for a reason. Yeah. 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 Is, um, is your concern for great stability the two feet over the fifty feet of the fence line? Um it seems to be what well the loss of elevation is. 
that uh, I mean you know that 40 inch tree that's right that's right in the vegetated zone we like to see vegetated right and so if you can imagine the root zone for that tree it's got to be fantastically it's big shading on the vernal pool well it's not a vernal pool but it's shading on the pond it's shading on the pond it's providing um, the proposed pond no, no, the existing, no, no, the existing isolated, isolated wetland. Isolated wetland. <laughs> the existing isolated wetland. The existing isolated wetland. The pool is not a proposed pond. <laughs> um, a pond in a pool. Pond but it's also, I mean, those roots are stabilizing the slope. Um, you know, I, I'd love to see if um, I understand the fears, and I'm not disqualifying, you know, the homeowner's fears about that tree. I just want for the sake of the habitat. I just want to know if if there can be a middle ground somewhere where that tree stays but is made safe. And I'm not the expert to provide that answer or that solution, but I know there are experts to do that. Haven't we in the past asked for uh, arborist or somebody yep. To, yep. Um, and to, um, to take Mr. a look at? Sullivan. I'm sure knows what I'm talking about. You asked on past projects. Yeah, right. I mean. And I told the owners this. I said, if there's one issue with this, it'll be the 40 inch tree. And, <laughs> and you tree. got it right. Right, and if they have big concerns with it, and if yep. we have to get a tree expert to come in, we will. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not disqualifying your concerns. You know, you have to live with that right now. Um, but um, our job as being on the Conservation Commission is um, is trying to figure out how th to continue to um, protect this wetland, and that tree's a part of that. But as uh, I, as they requested also for the safety, um, they are in return for cutting those trees down. They're they're providing for planting several other species in that area. Um, one of the things that I had as a question was the arborvitaes that are there now. Are you going to actually take those up and replant those on the site, or are you going to take those off? The landscaper can move them without improving them. Yes, I'd like, I'd like those moved to the right side. Yeah, because they're, they're pretty large, pretty robust. Yeah. Um, yes. You know, the thing is that I, you know, if, I don't know how many arborvitaes were there, but if they advanced cutting the 40 foot, 40 inch tree down, stump grinding it, whatever you needed to, to make the proper bid for moving those arborvitaes and replacing those, you know, that, that, that area with, you know, some of the arborvitaes and then another type of um, species of tree, you know, I think that that would be a good compromise for the applicant and also to protect the wetland area. So the habitat value of that 40 inch tree is not duplicated with all those plantings. So it's not, but we do have the very large 40 inch that's basically right behind it. Well, that's already there. Right. Which is off property. But it also was a, a, um, adjacent to the, the isolated wetland. There are, there are probably better species too that could be in the, in the mindset that the tree does be removed. You know, we could replace it with oaks, maples. You know, the, the blue spruce, I think, is probably not a... I mean, it, 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 it would work, but um, I think it'd be the best option. And then the, the hydrangea, the two trees, I mean, I can... You know, I know those trees, and they're kind of on the border of a shrub tree, woody shrub, but that could be something more robust of an oak or maple. Something that might get some canopy or... expert look at the, the 40 inch tree as well and we talk about the root system we'll have to look at the pool patio excavation for the pool how that might affect the root system long term um, yeah I, I would i would expect that that a lot of the root system would be right underneath the patio but i mean radius wise we're talking about what maybe a quarter of the root system based on the construction, and I don't think that's... No, that, 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 so I would say that, you know, talking about wow, something so like that, yeah. the um, system, that's a huge... So with this 600-square-foot pool, you're not locked into any um, 
distance from the property line. Is that how that works? I, I am locked in to distance off the property line, um, but it's, it's like five feet. Five feet. Five feet. Or ten feet. Right. So you have ten. You have ten feet that you could you could move that if if you had to. So if you move over ten feet to to save the roots, if that was a possibility. I wanted to talk about the shed. Um, I assume the shed's going to have the lawnmower and whatever else in it. The access for that lawnmower would that be over the patio or or in back and behind the pool to over the patio. They have, they have the doors facing the patio. So it's in back, to, to store stuff away after the, the pool season's over. Okay. Like they have chairs. And got it. Stuff like that. I got it. So where the stone is and where the patio meets the 35 mm -hmm. foot line and everything else that's not a shed, is that going to be lawn or is that going to be vegetated? Um, so it won't be used. How, how deep is the pool? Is it going to be like a bowl or is it going to be like just straight down? Just Go from three down to seven. Three being near the 40 foot? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 40 inch tree. Yeah, 40, 40 inch tree. Towards the 40, yes. Okay. Uh, in the area you talked about, Chuck, that's the does the patio meet the lawn or is there a drop off? It'll meet the lawn. It'll meet the lawn. And the stone, I right, assume, so above it. Yes. Yeah. But can I ask, how's that going to happen if the fence line gets moved up to be closer to the 42 foot line? Because it's pretty complicated back there. Right. Depending what happens with that tree, this one's out here. We're assuming it's going to go. If it didn't go, then I'd have to move this So they keep this on the way this year. I'll be, I'll be very direct, you know, what I'm hoping to, one of the big um, stumbling blocks I see in this plan is um, converting that into um, lawn. Mm -hmm. Now, it's just going to mention the same thing. You know, How often um, have we taken an, like something that's natural and said that it's okay with lawn? It's been grandfathered in. And I usually tell applicants when they come in here that they might get a foot or two being, and that's a variance also to have right. that turn into, right. well, the structure would be a variance, but um, yeah, it isn't something that we've done before. I guess it's not a variance, but um, to have it naturally vegetated and then to turn it into lawn, so, I don't so see that happening. So I, as much as possible, I would like to see a plan that shows that 35-foot zone staying um, native and, well, filled with native plants that support the wetland habitat, native uplands, because it's clearly not a wet area. You don't have a problem between the 25 and the 35 if that becomes a mulch area with the native plantings. Um, Are you saying landscape mulched? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm talking about... Just leaving it I'm, natural. I'm, mm. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. the idea. This is a natural buffer zone. And, and, it's not and a landscape. the reason is because it's so. natural now. It's not in the past. These haven't been... Like, if you remember one that we allowed, it might have been because there's lawn there now. Right. And we've asked to change that lawn into mulch. I mean, just to kick back on that a little bit, you have the, the 25 feet that you protect that your natural do not disturb area that's your natural area the 25 to 35 is supposed to be a transitional site grading area so you can have a structure up to the 35 and then have grading landscaping within that 10 foot buffer is how it's usually done that's not that's how the a, regs yeah, are written though yeah it's that it, it allows you to be up there is it it allows you to go to the 35 foot line just like all wetlands regulations do if you have no place else to go 
but if you could move it, we will push you back as far as we can in the, into the buffer zone. The, the 10 feet between the 25 feet and the 35 feet is there for protection, and in the bylaw it does say that we can extend that if we feel that that 10 feet is not enough protection. So it's a root protection and it's other protection too, but it, it has that language of protection, root zone, um, and it does say it's protecting the 25, 25 foot. Uh, the structure is, we explained that, um, that's, you know, that's the line where you can't cross uh, without, a, without a variance. But that's not automatic. Well, I think I'll have to look at some things with the owner. I think we'll talk to a tree expert, see what we, you know, come back with on the 40 inch tree, the 12 inch tree, the 18 inch tree, mm -hmm. and maybe we'll look to see if there's a way, like Chuck said, if I can slide the tool further to the left get it further away from the wetland and open up an area a little bit. I'll okay. kind of see what I can do on that. Uh, I know they really wanted a shed as part of this project in order to store pool, you know, mm -hmm. pool equipment chip. You know, I think the colors. shed, in my mind, the shed works. It's just that area of lawn seems to be, I don't see how that fits. And if we could get a landscape plan that has these details in it so we could see how this whole thing comes together, that would be um, a really good visual for me anyways. Uh, because right now, it, um, in my head, I'm, I'm just saying, it seems to be in a pocket that won't be accessed too much. So why couldn't it be natural? Or why couldn't it have been wildflowers back there that you wouldn't get into and it would prevent you from bringing the, anyone walking in that direction? So the, the limit of work would be the patio and the edge of those stones, and you know you can enter the shed from the patio area. Okay, those, those are things we can look at. Okay, I have a question for Chuck. Um, do you happen to? I mean, I I didn't go out and walk those wetland flag lines on the site visit. Do you know? Do you happen to know how those flags jive with? previous wetland flags for that isolated wetland? Um, I don't. Yeah. Because, uh, do you mean the flags from, is it 14 Strawberry Hill? From 14 Strawberry Hill? Are you talking about from when it was decertified and there was a big... Yeah, about all that? those flags. <laughs> so, I personally don't want to go back all that far because they're only good for three years, they're only good yeah, for the extent good. of the permit. So we could look at 14 and see if um, Four one of the five. flags. But, but didn't, didn't um, Norris do this flagging over there too? So with 14, it, it had been an approval back in time, like 2009 there was a permit extension. And then when MBA builders came in to build 14, they, they did a minor modification based on those flag locations. So no one actually physically went out and put the flags up. It was a modification to that approved plan of the order. So the last time someone flagged that was probably back in like 2008, 2009. Yeah. I wasn't involved in that. So the only thing we could do is go out and look at each flag and determine for ourselves if... I mean, those... Based on my memory of the site, those flags might be right. I don't think they're. Well, I can tell you the one near the too terribly 40 far inch, off. whatever that is, oak or maple, is probably right. So. But 3, 3A. Yeah. No. It, no. it was raining out. It wasn't a great day for the site visit. Um, I know that one, some. A wimpy guy sat in the car. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um. So maybe we could have a site, another site visit too, and get more of the commission out there to, to look at the um, species idea, yeah. and then figure didn't, out. Didn't Norris do this in August, 2000? In August. Yep. yep. So just to cover the bases. Um, do you happen to know the soil quality near the uh, dry well? I do not. Is it an infiltrating? Yes. Dry well? Yeah. Just curious. Okay. 
Jack, one thing I might suggest when you go back and take a look at this and see, I don't know how much work it's going to take you to do that, but if you uh, can place those large boulders, um, that might help the commission to make a decision predicated on where those boulders are and, and then where the proposed fence is going to go and the landscaping. So that might help for the next time so that we're not guessing. Okay. And my best guess is they're on that 42 foot existing contour between the 40 inch tree and the 18 inch tree. No, they're, they're actually right. down, they're down slope from that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do I hear a motion? Um, I just want to add one more thing, Jack. Um, the infiltration area, it it would be great for you guys to kind of have that with a barrier around it during construction so the soil isn't compacted and that it, I don't know if you can do that based on where it is but that would be great if you could kind of isolate that spot and I think Jack has a great and I talked to him offline one time about infiltration chambers and he said if you know when he doesn't do soil tests and the reason why he's not doing a soil test is because this is a conservation request not something that has to prove out through uh, the aquifer protection district um, just puts in more stone so, I don't know if you want to explain it better than that but if, he, if it has one foot of stone you can add two feet of stone mm -hmm. and then get get the runoff and get the infiltration he needs gotcha. so. and I assume that's roof runoff yeah. yeah. I do so, like the addition. I like I like solving that thing that had happened, the injustice that had happened in that corner of your house back in the day. I I think it's great that you're you're just filling it in like a puzzle piece. It's just great. <laughs> so um, <laughs> Anyways, that's the best part of this project. I like that. And I like the feeling behind it. Are there any, <laughs> are there any questions from the audience? Um, just Jack curious, do they use process material that really comes from our branch? Is that a good material for that? It's usually pretty, pretty stainless stuff. It's 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 usually what like so the stone that surrounds the drywall is washed from right. stone because you don't want any vines. Sure. Because that that's what clogs up the stone and takes away the efficiency of storage. So process and interpretation. Yeah. It's washed from stone. Okay. And like Chuck said, you can add like, you know you can go one foot wide, two foot wide, mm -hmm. depending on the soil. Yeah, we can. We'll revisit the comments we received tonight. Back okay. to the plan. Are there any comments from the audience? When are you looking to con construct? You want this move for next next summer? It's, it's been 18 years. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So I, I was just wondering because obviously the the addition is going to come first and the pool is going to come second, or is that incorrect? <laughs> You're going to put the pool in first and then do the addition. Well, <laughs> I put the, the pool, do the <laughs> put the pool in and Some then do the addition because then yeah. you can drive under that area. Yeah. So, it rains as much as that works. Yeah. 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 It's good construction. So it's not at the, it's not at the beginning and we're working with that. <laughs> For this point away. So Jack, could you show the construction entrance on the plan? Do we have a motion Can to continue? Can I make continue? a motion to uh, continue NOI 270 7108 Strawberry Hill Lane? Second. Second. All those in favor? When will we be next meeting? December 12th. 12th. Yeah. Right. yeah. In November 1 and December. I'm not going to lie, I came here last week. Hmm? You came here last week? <laughs> For the second time. Well. It's your next Thank you. Thank you. I got you zoning meeting for 15 minutes. What? Okay. Thank you. I gotta look at the website. I'm so confused. Those two weeks for you. So, real quick, continue, continue, continue. The yep. next three. Do so I hear a motion to, to continue notice of intent 270 
125 and 126 Azalea Circle, Map 23, Lot 125 and 126, Case Street Realty, LLC. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Do I hear a motion to continue? Notice of intent 270-0705, 1503 Main Street, Lot A, Map 60, Lot 11, Castellano. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Do I hear a motion to continue notice of intent 270-0704, 1503 Main Street, Lot B, Map 60, Lot 12, Castellano? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Um, all new business. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. And oh, Teal? Yeah. Yep. From Yep. We uh, took a site visit and we have a map as well. So. So um, we have a change in our business operations that require us to store our trash on the property until it can be picked up by a refuse company. Um, and so the minor modification that I have um, is permission to put a messy dumpster um, on the rear spot, parking spot. So to place it on the existing asphalt and to construct the fence around it. So this uh, this request was reviewed by the engineering department that made a site visit on the day the request came in. And who else reviewed it? I reviewed it. Uh, planning reviewed it to see if it needed um, site plan review. And uh, the CPD said that um, they'll go with what the commission, how the commission feels. So we're, we're going to be in charge of this. We're driving this project. So we also did a site visit and drove through the parking lot and thought that maybe uh, we would suggest that we wouldn't um, frown on if it was going to go on the lawn. But I did run that past um, Teal, and she said she prefers right right where it is. So everyone seems to agree that this is uh, an okay spot. Uh, none of the town departments have any issues with it. And like I said, it's up to the commission to decide. So with that background, I'll turn it back to the chair. Okay. And um, so I guess the only question I have, which is typically covered by the Board of Health, is um, um, when rain and snow and everything else hits the top of this, um, what happens to that runoff? So the lid is not flat, it's a slanted lid, and it slants from the back of the unit to the front of the box. So yeah, and I asked that very same question because it is a concern. Because when when the trash is isolated in a dumpster area, well, that's a violation. But when it's a single piece of plastic or trash or you know paper out in the wetland, well, that's unmeasurable and it's not a violation. So we need to stop that. At, so I did ask the question to Teal, and she said not only does it have a cover. But they don't want to get into any issues with, um, you know, people dumpster diving or whatever, whatever that is. <laughs> so it's going to be right. locked. It's going to have a lock well, but I didn't mention and defensible lock as well. So and will it be fenced? Isn't that what you call it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't sound like very much fun. Uh, hey guys, I guess we're doing tonight. <laughs> I'll pass. So will it be fenced or no? Yes, it'll be fenced. Yeah. Okay. And that's in, um, in accordance with the yeah. Okay. Yeah, so chain link fence, privacy screening, double gate in the front. The only thing that we usually add, I'm not sure if you thought about, was bollards to protect the uh, doors because the, the, the trucks are, are vicious on the enclosures. So we'll so work closely with Jared to make sure both the side of the fence conforms so that it's a front loading unit, so they come and they pick it up and they jump out of the truck and set it right. down right in its place. You know how they open the doors, right? <laughs> with those forks. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we have a very good relationship. Unless you give them a clicker. <laughs> That'd be great. It's my phone. All right, yeah. we're going to record yeah. this. Uh, <laughs> our, 
get right on her when she says they think it's going to work. No, they get they get crushed. We, we, so. We'll be working closely with them to make sure that the dimensions of the box, the construct of the box, mm -hmm. meets um, what they think will uh, be sufficient durability for the operation and the basis. And it's just one dumpster. It's not like some sort of storage area for different types of waste, maybe contained in different containers. Exclusively a fashion. So are okay. we um, looking at this as a minor modification, minor mo this, permit change? This, for us, this would be on existing pavement, this mm -hmm. would be a minor modification. The entire long, uh, parking area drains into the storm right. drains mm -hmm. located mm -hmm. in the center of the parking area mm -hmm. and then out to the wetland. So uh, right. where the leachee is going is obvious. Hmm. Okay. It's a good spot for it. You lose two spots, but that's... Let's see. Show it's just one. I gonna? think I can get it in one. All right. Given how wide those spaces are in the end. Okay. I don't have any problem with the proposed plan. Do you have any? No. All set. Thanks, good. Any other questions from the audience? Okay. All right. So we'd like to have a, uh, a motion to just approve the minor plan change. Um, and just so you know, it's a minor um, modification. I propose we approve the minor plan change as proposed tonight. So moved. How about a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Okay. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you. I'll see you in a couple. Oh, one, one second. Oh, okay. um, so we also did a preview on your certificate of compliance. Yes. And just this, just a quick run through the area. There, there were some things we'd like to clean up okay. and um, couldn't really tell the extent of the vegetation, uh, its health. So this okay. project really was most of this year and we haven't gone a full year yet. So right. I think we're gonna push this off until spring and see what it looks like and then maybe some, um, and then see what, if there was any winter die off and then see that first spring cleanup. Okay. So here's your turn to say that's not what I expected. That is, that is, I mean, I honestly, from a couple of weeks ago, I honestly thought that I was coming here tonight to, to address both issues. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I would say that this is our business and we pride ourselves not only on our product, but definitely on the, the place of, of business. We have other sites, um, specifically one in Small Scott, that we take care of and um, take a lot of pride in the, the yard and the, the English garden, if you will. Um, we, I think we could address anything that died off. I think that, um, you know, we went ahead, I don't know who did the site visit um, this week and whether, whether or not anybody noticed the 30 additional arborvita that we added over and above the approved plan by the commission last spring and two additional oak trees over and above what the commission approved last year. So, you know, we, we definitely have an interest to A, keep the property clean and B, keep it looking nice and lively. So, um, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know what else to say other than uh, we would we keep up the property. I'm sorry, yes. I, I think the, the whole project in and of itself really looked great. Um, I, I thought it looked substantially better than what was there before. One of the things that we did notice that in, in the entrance as you drive in, where the snow storage is, mm -hmm. there had been someone that looked like that, you know, they probably didn't do it purposefully, but they backed into that snow storage area yes. probably after it had rained and put some ruts in there. Yes. Um, there was some water because it was raining the day that we went there that was actually running out from that mm -hmm. snow storage area, um, ca casting silt from that snow storage area out onto the parking lot area. Um, so there's a, a lot of ways that you can actually correct that from happening. Um, so, you know, that might be something that just from a maintenance standpoint, you might want to look at um, 
addressing that. Yeah. So I, I'm actually trying to address the, the damage that you identified in the snow storage area. Um, and actually, it's been in a couple of other places, including damage to the asphalt has come from tractor trailers and trucks that are not our customers, mm. but who trespass onto the property and who yep. park. I had a tractor trailer last week who literally parked in the entrance for 12 minutes yep. and didn't move, right? So right. you couldn't even get to the property. Um, because of the traffic flow from the gas station yeah. through your property. Well, right, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Right. Yeah. where the entrance because is, the he was parked traffic. in the right. entrance. Yeah. So he wasn't parked yeah. across it. He, he had pulled through and stopped. Yeah. And so I'm currently working with the town to see what we can do about getting signage that designates an entrance. Um, also looking at things like height restrictors or gates or bars or something to to see what we can do to mitigate the amount of traffic that is in ours that comes through and, and does damage. Even on the um, right, the left hand side of the, the drawing there, a yep. produce truck came in and you know backed he, he came out, figured there was no parking and he actually backed into the parking lot and back along the side and hmm. I was like, hi, it's raining. You just roll through everything. So, right. yeah, I, I think that will be a. It's one of the things I noticed in the entrance that there's no. Curving. There's no curbing, but there's also no, like no lines, no. Nothing that says do not park here, do not stop here. You right. know, as Water. you're going into that exit entrance. I'm sorry, entrance. entrance yeah. And I remember when we were talking about this project right from the get go. Mm -hmm. You know uh, about you know where you're going to enter and ent enter and exit this property. That that was kind of a concern that I voiced at the time. Right. And and it, it looks like the exit is going okay, but I would agree with you that you probably have a con concern about the entrance. Right. Yeah. So we um, um, we did stripe um, fire lane um, next to our emergency exit, um, and that is. So with a dental office and with some of the licensure and facility permitting that we have, um, we do have to designate an emergency exit and it has to be you know, accessible or close by. So on the interior of the building, we have our surgical suites right next to our emergency exit because those would be the rooms where something could go haywire. And so in order to allow for emergency vehicles to park closest to that, um, access point, we did strike, you know, fire lane, no parking, and that has improved that side of things. Um, the the entrance that it, I, I'm working on that one. I, I think that that deserves some more love and attention, and we're going to keep working on it until we get a nice flow. Um, for the winter, since no grass will be reestablishing itself, mm -hmm. we would request that you install uh, silt straw wattle along that edge and that would keep the sediment out of the storm drain. It would also be a small barrier for people to wreck the snow storage area. I was going to say, how does that work with the yeah. snow storage? Well, I guess when this ground freezes, you could move it, but it's right now every rainstorm, it's... It's been the, I mean, legitimately, not just, not just my perception, um, it's the rainiest um, September yeah. and October on record. Yes, yes. it is. Yeah. So, so but once 10 inches ahead of our annual rainfall. Yeah, we are. Mm -hmm. So but once that straw waddle is put down, it will freeze there. Yeah. Yeah, but they can, tr they can drive right into yeah. it and just yeah, I know. do it. It's, I understand, not, it's not a real barrier. It's only it's only an 8 inch has straw and well, usually stake it in I place. I don't want to take it and tear up because we have... Um, uh, irrigation through there, so there's irrigation heads that sit through there. And How do they expect to put the snow in there? Are they just driving it to the edge of the parking lot and then just pushing it back? Or are they driving further in? No, they'll push it there and then if there's excessive snow, they'll come with a backhoe and lift it up and rather than push it all the way across because that's it's like 30 feet. They have to drive their whole truck on the snow storage area in order to get it back to the fence. Well, it should freeze up soon, but I mean, every time it rains, we're, we're getting, I don't know, yeah. half There's a another thing you could do on the edge of, of, edge of that into that stream. snow storage area could rebate the, from the edge of the macadam into that snow storage area, like two feet, dig it down eight inches and put in crushed stone in there. 
and then any water that would be coming out of that area, especially something that is silt in it, would then just drain into that crushed stone. On the inside of the stone storage area? At the very edge. Yeah. The edge. The very margin of it. Well, this is uh, this is already designed. I just need a shop gap measure until the grass establishes right. it itself. That's that's all well, I'm trying to say. And I, I will say that although you saw tire tracks and that looks like it was significant damage, um, most of the non-grass that did not grow in that area was due to morning doves who spent hours a day eating the seed in the area. I mean, it was comical. Everybody come into work and there was, I mean, there must have been a hundred birds and they just sat there hours for, for about three weeks. Oh, man. So they were well fed, um, but no grass. Oh, man. Not as much grass grew in that depression as grew on this was <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I did already talk to the landscapers about coming back in the spring and overseeding um, in those areas. I think that's the conservation mix. Yeah. So, what about the uh, straw wattle? Is that, I, I think that the plows can just either blast through it or you can... You can I don't want to commit to something without running it by... Myself. We can't have the silt going into the storm drain. Okay. So you, we need to figure that out tonight. I, I Why don't you? am not comfortable committing to something without first investigating it. I just I don't know enough about it okay. to be able to agree to something without running it by people who are not financially responsible for the site. Sure. Mm -hmm. And for the operations folks who would actually do any kind of work. So right. I understand the importance of wanting to address it, but I just don't feel comfortable with that. Why don't we continue then till the 12th? Sure. Would you like to continue and... I mean, I can't be here as well, so... I did the month of December is an independent book. But, but you could get us some feedback or about the viability of... Yeah, I mean, you could, you could ask your maintenance people, whoever you... And, and convey that to Chuck, and we could discuss that at our next meeting, which is the 12th of December. Okay. So it, it's what we're asking, and maybe you don't understand, it's very, very simple. It's That's, and the, again, I, yeah. whether I understand it or not, no, I, I should say, no matter how simple it is, I don't understand it well enough to commit to it. No, that's fine. I just so. wanted to make sure that you understood it was just, it's a roll of whatever, the barrier, it's like a tube, and you roll it out and stake it in place. Mm -hmm. The other part that you may not understand is that the sediment that's going from your site into the storm drain and then into the wetland, that could be considered a violation at some point. Mm -hmm. So um, it it can't, it needs to be, you know, we need to get an answer soon. I mean, I don't know if the commission wants to tell uh, Teal when we'd like an answer by, or at least by the next meeting, even if she can't get here. Right. But that's three weeks away, so the rainstorm's coming snow. tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, technically, the snow is coming tomorrow. Right. So I don't know how much. I mean, I don't. I don't know the timing of. You know, do I get an answer and then the commission decides on it? And then I mean, then we're in the middle of December, and I don't. I don't know if anybody took pictures. I took pictures almost every time it rains. I take pictures of our drains to show that we have appropriate drainage on the site. So I don't know if you know. You can show those. I, I've taken pictures after storms um, to show like any kind of ribbons of silk that might have dried on the on the asphalt. Um, so I don't know if you have any pictures or anything that shows where from the storage area it was coming or right where the tire tracks are. So where the tire right tracks where the lawn is, is ripped up. Mm -hmm. So if we corrected where the lawn is ripped up, then that should be. It's sufficient. still open ground when the ground will. It hasn't been con it, it hasn't been you know the grass vegetated is, yeah, with the grass. Yeah, you don't and have the grass, so you you know that's what the problem is when the rain hits it. it it's, you know all, everything turns into liquid and it, it runs off. Okay. I have a question. If you bought some, or acquired some turf, like natural turf, mm -hmm. would you buy it in rolls to? lay down in your yard. Something like that would eventually root itself. I don't know if it would do it this time of year, but with that, that is well, This is not the greatest time to, to plant. Well, yeah, even, uh, yeah it's, you're getting a little too far. Out yeah. It, filter out the silt. Well, let me ask, what about erosion matting? Just a thought. I don't know if it's a problem. Or mm -hmm. 
But that helps you get it would, compliance or whatever. You have to spend yeah. money to put the turf down, but yeah. it would die. Yeah. What, do you, what are your thoughts about, yeah. about erosion yeah. matting? Yeah. It's yeah. such a tough time. Yes, yeah. it's too late. I think that would be fine too. I think I came up with the simplest thing. I, mean, I think they could go across the street and get yeah. 25 feet of that stuff yeah. and stake it, it in is simple. for under 50 bucks and then whatever labor costs, and then it would be done yeah. deal. You know, everyone's happy. But uh, uh, I think, I think what I hear is until the next person drives in. And well, drives on it. So I, well, that's uh, also I, a barrier. I mean, someone would see that more than. Yeah. I mean, it's not a great barrier. It's, it's I, strong. So I'm, I'm, I want to be honest, too, right? And, and I would like to think that I've been very upfront and honest. I could, I could put something in, right? If you say it's 50 bucks plus labor, because it's, you know, I don't know what that is, right? But let's say it's $300 to have someone come and, and run 25 feet. And the first time a plow comes, they're going to go right over it and then we're kind of back to square one well no because when the this is only to get us between now and when the when the ground freezes and for that i don't know 300 bucks 50 bucks whatever it is we're saving all that sill from going in the stream and then into the wetland mm -hmm. and then next year it's going to grow and you don't have this problem mm -hmm. it's a one-time stopgap measure to and, and when the plow goes through it that's fine because the ground is frozen so, it, so I was trying to really keep water. keep something that would be simple to put up, quick, do the job, and then if it gets run over, it's really only hay that's going to go into the snow storage area, which is really kind of a vegetated snow storage area. So it okay, doesn't so even have to be cleaned up. Then, you know, trying to, to gauge the cost and effort associated with it, and then knowing exactly how long we're trying to prevent you know, additional silt from entering into the system. Um, and then you said that the silt is really coming from those two tire tracks. Can we then just kind of lay a barrier in between where the tire tracks are? They're spread, what, maybe six feet apart? I think there's a low point there, and, and you can kind of understand where it is. And that, that I don't know if six feet's enough, but well, you no, might I mean, do 15, 20 feet, feet so or like, something like that. Yeah, so that we... We go on either side of it. It comes in a roll. You can't get less than whatever that roll is, and I think that's 25 feet. So, you know. Well, I'm not, I mean, I'm going to be honest here, too. I'm not doing it, so I have no idea how much it was in a roll. And I'm not going to tell you how fun it is to install that stuff because I don't know. Either. All right. Well, then I will um, go ahead and I will make the approval, and um, we'll get the landscapers to put something down until they start their snow removal. Yeah, it seems like the landscaper would want to uh, demarcate that line also, so when the plows come in, they would know mm, where pavement it. is and where. So that hasn't happened yet. They haven't put out the little orange yes. stakes. So I maybe that's the I time agree. to do it. Yeah. Like, so, yeah. You know, my question is, what's to stop these tractor trailers from going in there? Not much. There isn't. Yeah. There isn't anything. No, there. they're going to get creative. I, I I thought of something too, but I can't figure out how the how the patients would notify you. You want to put a gate there, and then somehow they notify you they're coming, and bang, hit a button. I will tell you, most most trucks really don't come through. They really don't. They come around the drive through. It's those guys that aren't from here, mm -hmm. right? The ones who don't go every day mm -hmm. that are are super obnoxious. Yes. Um, it's the it's the guys in the giant you know U-Haul rent trucks, yep. and they don't know where else to go, and they don't know how to drive them, and so they park them wherever. And, mm -hmm. You know, and it's it's really for me my my primary concern is the safety of our patients, right? Because they're coming out, they don't feel great, right? They're a little distracted, they might be in pain, and they don't necessarily expect you know a giant box produce truck to come ripping through the parking lot, so. Yeah, I, we've thought of the gate, and then there's always, you know, every patient would call and be like, what's the code? What's the code? You know, kind of thing. Um, you know, putting a height restrictor in, you mm. know, and saying there's a low clearance, but you I just have to go to facial recognition software. <laughs> just, you just put Do you have all your teeth? You can. A lot of tendon. <laughs> That'll cost some money. Needs whitening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so, well. All right, so um, I hope that moves us closer to getting our certificate of issue um, why are you looking at me I think that uh, yeah. what's this th you know let's do this again what's the thought of the conservation commission as far as how far that I mean it, it's an area that needs more vegetation because clearly when some the littlest thing happened to it 
um, we had this issue. I think spring seems reasonable with letting things grow out again, but it's up to the commission. Well, I think it's a fair assessment to, or a fair judgment to say that that somebody not backed into the lawn inadvertently, this problem wouldn't exist. Uh, no? I don't know. Exactly. I, saw, and I saw a little bit of erosion. I, I thought it tore. Well, there was a tear. Lawn, but it's, but it's, maybe it's optimistic to say. Was it silt Let's say it's the parking lot prior to that? So it's, I'm sorry? Was it silt on the parking lot prior to the tire tracks being there? No, like I said, I go through and I take pictures so that I have evidence of how, how it drains and how it out there so you can see. There's one picture I had where you can see, um, and it was because the tire tracks came through, right? So that was the day. Mm -hmm. and it, or I'm sorry, that was the, the week after because it happened on a weekend. Um, yeah, and that, that we probably have to put out preventative measure, measures to you know keep the wildlife from eating it, right? Because that, that was where we had the most, the most difficulty was. I, I have no doubts that you're, you know, a diligent um, property owner and care and are very interested in caring for um, the maintenance of your property. Um, but I, I don't think that snow storage area is well vegetated yet. And as a standard practice, we don't usually approve issue a certificate of compliance until a vegetation is established. So I'm in favor of moving it to the spring. That's just my two cents. And how do the other members feel? I, I agree with Anika. And we, and we were on the site visit, so we did observe that. Okay. One of the things I will say is we, we did the site, <clears throat> excuse me, the site visit the other day <clears throat> when it was raining mm -hmm. and there was good sheet flow and drainage in the whole yeah. parking lot. They did yeah. a nice job grading yeah. the parking lot and doing the drainage. So Yeah, and it's, a, sure. and yeah. it's a great design with, yeah. um, you know, a lot of unencumbered flow heading towards through rocks and, yep. you know, it's, it's a really great um, drainage design lot and, um, yeah. I, th I think just revisiting it in the spring um, and you know hopefully you know we're not holding you back from anything else any other progress in your business um, um, just, I mean just keeps us from finishing yeah, yeah we're finishing about the project and I have other yeah. projects to move on to so to keep circling back to this project yes yeah. it just yeah. kind of draws it out it's almost done well I mean we're probably six months away from coming back then to revisit the certificate of compliance mm -hmm. is how I look at it, right? Because it, yep. everything mm -hmm. needs to thaw, yep. grass needs to be itself. Right? Yep. And that conservation, I think it's a slow growing grass too. If that's mm -hmm. correct, because if I remember that, that seemed to take I don't know why they even use that. No. Why would they use that so far in the parking lot? Well, that was what was ordered, so right? It was, there were three mixes that we had to use. Conservation. We'll see how it comes up in the spring, and we, you can always throw like a rye on that. And it'll come right we out. may be able to revisit what gets planted there based on. You know, we don't want to plant something there that all the doves are going to refeast on because that's throwing money out to the doves. So we planted a winter rye now. Is it too late? It'll come up in the spring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you could overseed it now, but. I, I think my head keeps going. I haven't seen the site, but the plows. I mean, if the if the plows are going to then just. Cloud to the straw waddle that yeah. whatever that is, the seed, the yeah. lawn every year, yeah. anything's just gonna. I gotta tell you, just from my experience with plows on grass, this comes from having been a member of a ski club years ago up north. Every year the plows would come in because half our parking was on the yard. So there was a small driveway, right. thirty cars would be in that yard every winter. We'd plow it, piles and piles of snow. Every spring the grass came up and we had to cut it. The grass never stopped coming up. I was always amazed by that. Oh, yeah. I thought for sure the plows, because they'd gouge up the lawn every now and then. We never would have left without grass. Well, this is grass that used to be pavement. Yeah. Well, but, but yeah, once the ground's frozen, they, they, they don't do a whole lot of damage to the mm -hmm. to the ground, so right. unless they dig it up. But if you planted, when, if you overseeded that now, when awry and, and you and you 
plowed on top of that before it germinated and just scoured the seed away. Yeah. So you didn't have to put the, a big windrow of nice winter rye at the <laughs> furthest end of your right. snow storage area, which is not going to be seasonal. Yeah. What you're looking for. I mean, sod or turf. I mentioned that. I mean, well, sod, I mean so. April 10th, you could put some sod down, and it would take. Well, and without knowing what kind of winter it is, you know, you all know what snow storage areas look like. I mean, I I could right. snow there till June. Yeah, right. Yeah, like, sure. I mean, yeah. Right. Yeah, and it could, and sadly enough, though, I mean, it could rain until February too. It's just, <laughs> right. it's just you just never know what you're yeah. going to get from November. Exactly. It's crazy. Yeah. So I move we continue this. Second. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Thanks for coming in. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Oh yeah. Have a good day. You too. Okay, Grove Street. All new business. Do we have the... Um oh, Metal Group Golf, Metal Group Golf Club. Yep. I prepared the um, request for determination for Metal Group. And... <laughs> Closed it at the last meeting, and you wanted this issue, so you can review it. Um, but it is up here. So while you're signing that, we can talk about uh, Jacobs Way, Augusta Court, and Reading Woods. And Reading Woods would like to receive their um, bond back. They have a $20,000 bond on that property, and it's an assur assurity bond. <coughs> and uh, the commission went out on Tuesday and did a site visit around the property looking at the rain garden. We had previously already looked at the area behind building seven and had taken care of that. And so that didn't need to look at. So we had the rain garden and um, we noticed that there was uh, flags on some of the pine trees. And uh, these are small pine trees, they're probably four to five feet tall and they had died off. And it looked like they were um, slated for removal. So I did uh, make some calls because they were quite close to the rain garden. And I talked to first, um, first off I talked to uh, this, the survey, the surveyor, I think it was Dave Farah from Mashandra. And um, I'll say all that a couple of times fast. Um, and he's, he's, he understood where the, where the uh, flags were. He said it wasn't something that they had done and that Pulte has finished that project um, and that he thought that it was maybe the maintenance company or the uh, condo association that was just swapping out the, the vegetation. So I actually uh, found out who the uh, management company was and I, I called them and I asked them about the trees and they are, their plan is to identify the trees that are dying and cut them out at the surface of the ground. And I, I cautioned the gentleman that I spoke to that these trees may be for visual shading or visual barriers between the neighbors. So this area was between South Street and Jacobs Way, but Jacobs Way is a named street, and where we were was around the back, which was the first right, and it's mm -hmm. kind of an unnamed road that goes to the um, uh, the garage areas back there. It's a dead end. So it's between that area and South Street. So he, he said that he had called Pulte Homes a couple of times and he had um, not been it not been a good experience for them. They So there was no relief he could get for those pine trees. So they were just cutting them out because they were just too expensive to, uh, to replace. Um, so I did. I did talk about the um, 
<clears throat> I think that's called the decision, the planning board decision, is that what they call that? Um, where they write up everything that's supposed to happen on the site and then they review it before they release the site and all that. And I said, that might be in the planning decision that, that was given on the property and you should talk to, and I pointed him in the right directions. But I did also alert um, the staff planner about what was going on out there. So for your information, um, those trees are just going to be cut at the base and not replaced. Um, and we counted seven. And this gentleman I talked to said there was eight on the property that they had plans to do that. And he said they may have been done today. Uh, so what, what can the commission do about this is issue? I, I'm I a mean, little confused. Yeah. Those trees, are they part of the rain garden is, uh, under our jurisdiction? Exactly. So the rain garden we were asked to um, oversee during this process. So it, it was up to us to make sure that it was vegetated, <coughs> not working correctly, but vegetated and there was no erosion. Those trees are on the bank outside of the rain garden uh -huh. and they're on next to the fence and they are specifically there for a kind of a visual barrier. Okay, so they're not they're not really tied to the rain guard. And that was the what can we do about it? I was going to get into what you and say what I just said. Is it really something that falls under our scope? Look at our so we counted seven out of so out of eight trees, seven of them are near the rain garden, um, and there's no. Were they plan part on replacing them? Yeah, but were they part of a notice of intent and mitigation? They wouldn't. They really wouldn't be part of our notice of intent. It's so far out the buffer zone, thousands of feet away from the way highway drainage area that was delineated as a buffer out of the wetland. So then, I, I guess I would ask, what, what do we? Are we deciding on whether or not we should just do something? I'm giving you the information based on the site visit and letting you know about the trees that we talked about that were there, in, in my opinion, um, are for uh, visual shading. And yeah, they are up on in a, the rain garden. They're on the top. They're on the top. Yeah. So, so at this point, uh, Chuck, are you saying that it's it sounds it sounds to me like you're saying these are more a planning department? Right. Um, issue versus something that's, I mean, clearly they're out of our jurisdiction, but as Becky was saying, the only other thing I can think, think of is, you know, on our approved pl order of conditions order of for this, we would have specified, I mean, maybe some of those were planted as one, although I can't imagine we would plant something for mitigation that far away from the wetlands, but yeah. no. It's only um, veg the vegetation in the rain garden. It didn't even, it wasn't specific, but there was some okay. volunteer growth in there that which they pulled out. And that was, I mean, I don't even know if they mitigated the soil around there because it took three or four years for, for that, what was yeah. in there to establish itself, and then it right. took off. Right. So. And this was before the tree policy, so it wasn't, the placement right. of these trees wasn't about no. a previous no. taking. Not, not, not the cutting down of the trees. Or so it sounds like this is something we don't have jurisdiction over at right. all. Well, you, that's for you to decide. I mean, I mean, that's what it sounds like. I just wanted to give you the information. If you think that it's outside the rain garden and you're going to make that call, then then that's fine. I feel so what's comfortable. on the table is the twenty thousand dollar bond and the reference in the notice of intent and the certificate notice of intent that says that we can keep some of this for certain reasons erosion vegetation things like that and that's why we're, we're really talking about it plus we saw them on the site visit so so is that we talked about the other day there were trees planted this year um, that were in the uh, uh, wetland areas, ordered wetland areas that have not set, um, successfully grown for one year at this point. So, do we release a portion of their bond and so hold a portion of the bond for those that have not grown successfully for that one year? How we, let me remind the Commission how we handle that in the certificate of compliance process is. There were two attempts made by a very reputable firm, New England uh, 
New England, what's that called? New England NE. It's environmental. Yeah, New England Environmental out of. Um, she's a county from Amherst. Okay. Amherst, yeah. Amherst. So Mc Mass. It's McMartins, yeah. So they came up twice and they did a bunch <coughs> of planting, which only some of what they planted uh, kind of rooted and came back the next year. And then they came up again. I mean, that, that wasn't inexpensive to do. But what ended up happening is everything around it either choked it out or grew taller and they just died off. So after trying that for twice, we decided that uh, a great compromise would be uh, what the, the owners did. They wanted to see if we would accept a donation to the Shade Tree Fund, which right. they made okay. in the amount of $500, okay. and we accepted that, and that's why we, we issued the Certificate of Compliance. So okay. that those trees and what hadn't grown, which was planted, which was deep in the wetland area behind Building 7, mm -hmm. is off the table. Okay. Okay. It sounds like it sounds to me like there's n really nothing holding up the certificate of compliance then at this point mm -hmm. from our standpoint. Yeah. So I just need a motion to release the bond in the amount of twenty thousand dollars. Do I hear a motion? So right. moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? <coughs> okay. A motion to issue a certificate of compliance. Second. All those in favor? Sure. All right. So the certificate of compliance has been issued. And thought. typically what we okay. do is we issue the certificate of compliance and then they request the bond. All right. So that's why we're on step two. Right along, um, we're backwards tonight, so just okay. being consistent. Yeah, okay. Austin Prep, I don't know if you want to go and see what a great job they did at Austin Prep. They showed us with amazing photos. Yes, mm -hmm. and I have those here. Um, so, <laughs> good thing it's written there. So I was going to say Remmer again. So Mary Remmer was the consultant. Mary uh, Trudeau. Trudeau. Yeah, Mary Trudeau was her consultant on this project, and she. Um, she kind of came in after the field. So this this created wetland, which was part of the original uh, order of conditions. We requested this um, this area to be planted and to turn it into a wetland and to be brought down to the elevations where it would be, uh, all the plants would be touching the water, um, you know, more than 51% of the time. Was first done by the people that did the field. and. That didn't work out too well. So Mary Rimmer was hired by Austin Prep and they regraded, Trout, saved Trout. what they could, regraded and uh, replanted this. It's essentially, a it looks like a detention pond, but it, it's open on one end. So the well in that it's yeah. adjacent to flows into it and the groundwater comes up from the bottom. So even when it's not wet under the surface within 12 inches, it is wet. So this had been two years, because we went out there once and we weren't very happy. And um, this is these are the pictures of what it looks like now, fully established. Um, yeah, it looks well in grasses, yeah. rushes, all through there. That's your, by the way, that's your wetland seed mix right there after it blooms. Last time we went out there, there was a bunch of hardwood trees, I guess, that were planted around the perimeter that all died. Mm. Oh, I think. What were the trees? Well, the oak trees, uh, as Dave had suggested, that they may want to remove those because they have acorns on the uh, track. The track. Well, <laughs> <laughs> did, did come around the hip and turn and, and a step on a bunch of acorns. A couple, of, a couple were dying. Too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they were. Yeah, they were. A couple were dying. <laughs> I think conveniently, not only did Mary Trudeau not fill in the entire Form 8A, which kind of irked me this afternoon when I was putting this thing together, but she conveniently didn't put any pictures of all those trees, which have died. Right. Yeah. So oh, that must have been an oversight. There's, yeah, yeah. So, 
mean, the, the, you know, often you go out there and you, you, you come up with this plan and the plan is great and you're going to make, and this is what we want, it looks great on paper, but then, you know, what happens in the field is different. You just can't, just can't keep trying. I mean, those trees aren't going to work. We tried twice already, they died off. This is working. This is fine. Um, if they want to plant some trees, maybe they're going to do it higher up on the slope. These are kind of halfway up the slope, and, yeah. and it didn't work out. I was going to try to show you one because I saw it. Well, Einstein said the definition of insanity is right. Doing the same thing. Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Yeah. So my, my niece uh, proving they're not insane over there. They. <laughs> They stopped. decided not to take pictures of the dead trees and, and, and stick a fork in it, and they said it's done. My niece is uh, a student at, at uh, Austin Prep, and she uh, played uh, volleyball. And I went over there for, to watch one of her games, and I walked over and looked at the wetland that was over there. Mm -hmm. This fall, and it, and it looked at least 50% better than it did this spring. It was. on back security. Yeah, no, no, I didn't climb over the fence. So this is a request for certificate of compliance. Yep. Um. Just the trees. Good. What's that? It's just the trees. It didn't work out. Right. I, I mean, I, I. They also. I, I still have problems. Yeah. Let's get on with this. Yeah, trees are going to grow there yeah. anyway, eventually. It's fairly healthy. Um, and there were a couple of volunteer species of trees. I'm sure they didn't plant them there. Sure. Oh, something will grow in there. Yeah. Yeah. Something yeah. will grow in there it's, if it's a couple healthy of sumacs, habitat. A couple of sumacs popping up in there. So, mm. so were the trees original, originally part of the requirement for compliance? Yes. Yes, they're part of the uh, yes. design, the replication design. So the What's now there in place of trees is adequate? Well, trees weren't going to work there, and we might have been more hopeful about planting trees to try to create more habitat than that area could sustain, and I think that's why they died off. So we can't, I mean, it seems to me that it's been tried twice, just like over at um, Redding Woods. Sure. And okay, that's fine. That's, that, that's fine. That, that's so what you've got really is a wet meadow. Sure. You know, it, it functions more as a wet meadow than a red maple swamp. Yeah. Uh, is it tougher for trees to establish themselves on a slope? I mean, this was a pretty steep three mm -hmm. to one. If they're not planted properly, yes. Because maybe that was. I don't know. But the whole the whole issue. Anyways, well, I can get you some typical details of planting on a slope. I can pump them up. All right. <laughs> I'm ready. We'll put them up. If I had something right now. This is how we should do it. Like it in. All right. Are we ready to... Do a, I hear a motion? Uh, make a motion to uh, issue. Uh, issue the certificate of compliance for um, Austin, Pro Austin Pro Story School. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Great. All right, before we take our... I know that this is the most exciting thing in the world, but maybe we can put off our member and ask the gentleman in the audience uh, to kind of step in front. I was going to ask, what, <laughs> what are you here for? <laughs> See, it just goes to show you. So, um, this, this would be Citizens Open Forum, what we would be opening up now. We can open it up at, at the end if anyone else shows up, but I, you know, in the interest of kind of saving some guy a ride back to Dedham from uh, 20, 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. Should I go? Sure. Just sure. introduce yourself. Sure. And, uh, my name is Jim McGrail. I'm an attorney for Matt Carroll and Susie Carroll. They live in Forty also known as the Project from Hell at this point. So Matt and Susie have been before... The, the entire project or just their house? Well, actually, the, to the right, to the, to the left of their, their house, house is, is, you know... That's, I was just curious because it seems like the... the, the, the sorry, I'm sorry. So uh, from what, just the history of this, they've been before the uh, Conservation Commission before relative to, to trying to determine what the delineate what the wetlands were. Uh, Oxbow was the original consultant. Uh, they 
there was a dispute as to uh, whether Clark's proposed uh, line was accurate or not. Uh, the Carroll's followed the process after that. There was a little bit convoluted. It wasn't necessarily something that the Conservation Commission would have recommended. I got involved after that. Uh, we hired uh, Tom Hughes, uh, and we met last November in 2017 uh, with Chuck, myself, Tom Hughes, and the Carrolls to talk about the process. To talk Julie, about Miss here, the town planner at that time. Okay, and and we try to get a sense of ground rules. Try to do this right. Try to um, come back, get a sense of the, the town concerns, and. Um, approach this from a perspective that would be um, compatible with the uh, wants and needs of the Conservation Commission and the, and the laws and the regulations and things of the sort. We thought we established some ground rules. Um, we agreed that, you know, we couldn't really do anything for the months of November, December, January. We had a similar discussion. We had to wait for the thaw and things to do. Tom Hughes started doing his work in the spring. Uh, we've been waiting for a report for him in a sense. Uh, something, sometime in June, July, he just kind of became less and less available. The times that we got him on the phone, I got him on the phone, he's like, oh yeah, I'm busy, I'm busy, but I'm gonna get a good. August, he sent an email saying, I just have the final, I would do is put together the final report, it's set, it's good, it's gonna take me two hours, I'll have it done this weekend, and never heard from him since. Despite many calls thinking there might be something wrong, he might be sick, some of his family might be sick, you know, when so it gets so ridiculous, we were checking obituaries. That's how silly it got. I finally resorted to calling Chuck last week to say, hey, we've got this issue. Our consultant we hired, we paid him, kind of, we, my, my client paid him, it's gone AWOL on us. And I was alerted to the fact that my client's not the only person who's done it, too. The reason I was coming tonight was because he's representing somebody that was on the agenda. I thought I would see him here tonight and finally have a face-to-face -face say, what gives here? Can we just get this report done and be done with it? Uh, his item was tabled, he, 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 so he wasn't here. So I spoke to Chuck, he, Chuck alerted me to that, and I decided to stick around, maybe that I could just have a quick conversation with the board, not take with the commission, not take up too much of your time, because I know it's late and I know you want to get home. Uh, I guess at this point, the only request we would have is that maybe this, we could come in, myself and my client, sit down with Chuck and a couple of members of the board without violating any forms, open meeting lines and things, and just have a, just a, a straightforward conversation about what he's trying to do and what he wants to do and get a sense for good, bad, not good, and, and try to create a plan and just try to be done with this. I recognize that we're going to have to get... So maybe, hopefully, we, I can just call a Tom at the next meeting. I'll be back here on December 12th. Hopefully, Tom will be here and try to just have him issue his report so we can use that to file a notice of intent uh, with the commission and be done. But it's a frustrating situation. It's, ter it's, it's very unfair for my guy. I mean, he's just a homeowner in the town. He's not familiar with these processes and things. It, his, his intent was to try to put a pool in his yard and clear some trees. He has young children so that he could create some playing space in his yard. That's it. Um, it got a little off kilter with the Oxbow line and the back and forth from there. But I came in to try to just calm this thing down. I'm on the zoning board in Dedham. I, I, you know, I, I feel your pain. I know where you're coming from. I'm not here to cause any problems. I'm here to try to calm this situation down with my client. We thought we had a good guy in Tom. It's, it started out fine. I'm not so sure what's going on with the guy, quite honestly. But you know, it's not just us that he's doing this to. It's very weird. I've never seen it in my life. It's very unprofessional. There's not something wrong. But regardless, I'm going to try to help this guy get to where, not, he doesn't have to get somewhere. He just needs some direction. And if we can sit with, like I said, yourself and the chairman, the chuck, whomever else, do you think, you know, next week or two to see if we can establish some order here on some ground rules? That would be much, much appreciated. Well, do, can, do, we, can we go back to, uh, sure. just a, a second? Um, there was a superseding order conditions on this site. Um, was Tom's role, did, Chuck, did you meet with Tom? Did you? Tom was at, so me and Julie met with Tom and Jim 
Um, I can't remember when, but uh, was, we did we did have a conversation. Okay. And you know, Tom has been on several projects that were difficult here in town, and Tom thought that he could present this project uh, to the commission and come up with a solution. I mean, that's kind of how he how he works. He helps both sides kind of find a happy medium. Let me go back. Yep. Is there an that is there now an established wetland line or no. not? No. Well, there's a superseding order that accepted the Oxbow line. The Conservation Commission denied that wetland line and denied that application. So I guess it's like 61 days that he has time. It's something like in the 60s, the amount of time that he has to uh, file a court um, and go, go after the town. That didn't happen, so it's just done at this point. He has to file again with the commission to get over the um, regulations that the town bylaw. Huh? I, I was brought in after. He, he wasn't aware of the rules and regulations. Right. So He was flying by the seat of his pants. Right. He got the superseding order, didn't do what he needed to do relative to the time frames. And so when I came with Tom, the approach was, we're starting over. Yeah. For the, from a regulatory perspective. And I think that's what they represent. So given all so those Tom missteps, they were going to just come in again and start a new line. Yeah. This you know, and it wasn't. You know, we're going for broke. We're gonna. So I, I don't know what they were gonna come out of it, but I. Th but my sense was they weren't gonna go for broke, and they were gonna. They were gonna talk to the commission and kind of understand they had different people involved this time. And then now we're talking about Tom, and they were ready to go, and then that kind of fell apart. So. What Jim's asking for is something pretty typical in a lot of conservation commissions. We don't do it too much here because we do a lot of site walks. And I think that takes the place of what they call a working session, which is um, bring in your material, talk about the project, tell them what you're looking for when they actually come in to apply for the project, um, and what you expect to see. I don't know if you're going to get into whether you'll accept it or not. You can't really give them an ultimatum, but you just kind of direct them down the road so there's less time spent at the first meeting. So it's called a working session, and I think that's what Jim's asking for, and he's just saying, is there any way that we can kind of take that step prior to filing so we know where we stand? Uh, I, I'm just curious. Obviously, there's a some... <laughs> There's, there's, so there's, there's no delineation of a wet line, but if it was, do you know was the old Oxbow line on their property? Or was it? No. So you see the blue line? The, I'm just going to... Uh, I, the, I have these up in my car. Um, so we're going to sure. look at... This, this, is, this, is, the, this is the Oxbow yeah. line. Well, one of the things is with this truck... You want to revisit it? No, you, I don't. <laughs> Yeah, no, Did I remember you this. Oxbow any meetings prior, uh, after last spring about what the applicant wanted here? Because that was something that was was always in a mystery okay. to me on this on this site as to what the applicant was looking for, and that was never never dis discussed or never uncovered. I can, I can tell you now. I mean, I, you know, I'm, not, I'm not here. To like I said, I can respect what you're coming. There, from. there were some, there were some plans, you know, showing a pool and. Well, the pool not, was not in behind the house. So it's behind the house, right on the 35-foot line. No, the pool was not this behind is a, this the is house. A shadow. It was yeah. over here. The pool was over here. here. So well, you know, I saw one right. plane where it was behind the house. Behind the house. I never saw and, a plane. And then, like that. and then they wanted to move it to the side of the house. But sure. then there were so trees cut down, the and the trees were cut down before there was any permission for the trees to cut down. Right. And then there was some grading that was done. And when we went out to do the wetland line, it was in the beginning of the spring, and there was no vegetation that was growing. And so. Well. Yeah, it was a mess, was a and it, it wasn't uh, you know it wasn't all uh, Matt's issue. I think the commission, you know, Jamie Wan at the time said you know maybe we didn't direct this guy. He was going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I, you know, getting back into that, we gave him the benefit of the doubt on the lawn. Yeah, which, which turned into a lot more than we approved. Mm -hmm. But I think the commission at that time that was sitting was when 
they started to venture into that side lawn and, and do the same thing where he would do it first and then ask for permission later or come up with uh, can I do this one thing and then do more because you know can I cut down one tree sure then it's all clear cut but shrubs aren't considered trees. You only protect trees. That's what I heard. This is what I'm hearing from the gentleman. So there's a lot of confusion. I haven't seen the site lately, but I'm, I'm sure if it hasn't been touched, all that's grown back somehow. And I completely agree that we need to solve this. It just like anything else, you know, it doesn't feel good not to have a conclusion. It might not be the one Matt wants, but we need to we need to solve this. Sure, and I, and I guess I have to ask, shot of paying somebody to go out there and actually establish the web. Well, that's what we did. But, but, we, but we don't really know for a fact that that's where it exists, or is this something we're willing to accept? No, 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 no. He's not putting that in front of you. I'm not putting, I'm not this putting is, that in yeah. This that. is the old Oxbow line. No, no, so the, but is that, as far as we're concerned, that's not the real one. No, I, that was previously under dispute. Oh. It, and that's why it went to DEP. Okay, so if that's not um, the real so, wet line, then the 35 foot line's not really where it is either. We had. Right, I'm not, I didn't give you that. Oh, no, no. I'm just trying to, I, just, I just want to understand why this is such a mess. We had issue with that line. And it got DEP, to DEP. DEP came in and DEP then came in and, and said this is the line which yeah. was the Oxbow that line that we as arbiter, disagreed with as arbiter DEP did not side with us they they didn't think that the line we thought the wetland line actually extended onto the property mm -hmm. instead of being off property mm -hmm. um, so and would you said, DEP's so Chuck, just to follow that legally. I'm sorry, what? Would DEP's assessment something supplant our authority or is it our prerogative? Right. Yes. Right. So okay. they so, so they overruled us and you said there was an appeal. Yeah. And so, but that appeal on that overrule expired, you're saying? <clears throat> yeah, there's a 10-day appeal to appeal with DEP and that's on the state side, but there's a 60-day appeal on the bylaw side, 60, 61, something like that, and you would be noticed. He missed the appeal for the bylaw, so we're going to uh, start, we're starting from scratch. Uh, so, okay. so, that, so, so that was when okay. we brought it, because we knew, <laughs> I'm sorting we, it out. we knew it was a little contentious. He was frustrated because his feeling was, I hired an engineer, I don't know the first thing about wetlands, that's what he told me. Then I went to the DEP. They said it was that line, and this, this board disagreed. Okay, that happens. So my thing was to calm this thing down. He missed the deadlines, and to come back with Tom anew and say, "Let's let Tom. He paid more money, and if he comes back and says it's the Oxbow line, then his point was, I have three people, three entities saying this one." And we said, maybe it is, maybe it's not. Okay, so we hired Tom, we met with Chuck, it was a good meeting, it was calm. The problem, why I'm here tonight is Tom took a, all the, right. took a walk, and he's not only done, it, it's not just, so I thought it was us, and I didn't know why, but then I found out he's done it with three other entities as well. Something's going on with Tom. So the frustration is, and rather than, you know, let's take a, a quick break here from this and say, can we can we get with you and maybe you know establish you know what we because there is confusion amongst the members you know some people think the pool's on the side some people's in the back some people so it's um, I think I know what it is now if the pool is in he wants to it's in the back right behind the house and on the side the land slopes a little he wants to fit he wants to you know make the grade even so his kids can go out there and play. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to put a pool behind, and he's trying to even the grade so that they can create a yard space for his children to play. Okay, so that if that's what he, so I'll just put forth that if that's what he wants, we need to see the proposed project on a plan with right. the but wet. at the same time, he's also willing to have that conversation with Chuck and yourselves mm -hmm. to say, look, we can we can move on this now. This is going to be a lot more controversial, a lot more of a heavy lift. If you're looking to move on something sooner than later, you know this is the area we should concentrate on, and we should address this line later. So that he's just this guy's going crazy. He's looking for some piece of mind, really. 
And, and again, Tom, this could be all averted, I think, if Tom Hughes took two hours this weekend and gave us the report. And we're not under control. I'm not I understand you are. and I'm not I sympathize. You are. But, but that's but, the frustrating part. But that's why I'm here. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't come here tonight so, to have this conversation. So in, in I, terms I came of, to talk to Tom. In terms of a project, in my opinion, I'm just going to speak for me, but in terms of a project between those two options that you just put out that I think could get some motion on a a pool east of the structure, east of the house, I think that could get some motion. I, I think the so filling... You're next to the house. Between, no, east of the no, house is right back of the back. house. Behind. Yeah. Right. Immediately okay. behind. Right, right here. here. If you're staring at the house. Yeah, immediately behind. Immediately right. behind the house. Because um, I'm looking at the plant. I'm right looking on, at the on, compass. On. And yes, yeah, sorry. Um, for me, the harder issue is what happens with that side yard. That's, just a, told that's a lot harder. So that's hard. That's hard to, so that, see, the, to me, that seems like it's the, that's obviously a lot further away from the, the, the wetland than the, the, the if, delineation. Thing. If you look back to the, to the line that we were um, originally had, had more agreement with yeah. during the previous permit, that comes up near this yellow line right. here. So, so the wetland line comes up. I'm just gonna put and so that's so why that issue gets harder. On that side. Because yeah. you're saying, according to this plan, this plan is telling me the line is actually 40 feet farther away from the house, farther away from where in That's quite we had seen evidence that so, it was possible so, that the line was actually. So this, the, the one, the Oxbow line, was off by that much. You think it's off by fifty feet? I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. We to be honest saw, with you, yeah, we had the, the delineation. The first line that I saw, that when I went on the site, the very first line. Gotcha. Is came this almost up to this, this green line clear. in some areas up on the side of this. Yeah, the this like that. with no. So it no, came. It, it came in between the yellow and the green line. See, right? This is the forest. This is all. Don't you remember there was a big finger up in there? Because yeah, but it wasn't all that far up. It no. was. It was Bill Manuel's line. Exactly, it was right. Bill Manuel's line was way up, yeah, way up here. Yeah. See, see, for us, what my memory is, this wetland line was actually hugged a lot of that stone wall. Yeah. It, but then the stone in here is the property line, and then here it did jut out. Correct. Yes. yes. And then Correct. it kind of, kind of went off that way, and so based, and that was based on saturated soils, right. um, and, so and all that sort of stuff. So the difference is significant enough to make back here, like I'm, in my opinion, back here. Behind so, so the house, the house is, it's a lot a less in right. dispute. Right. Well, that would be, I think. So that's what a, that's my feedback to you. If that's helpful, um, over here, it's a lot more in dispute. Hmm. Well, that's my thought. That was so, my understanding you know, as well. Uh, hold on, let's just but, but let's, just, let's just regroup for a second. Yeah, sure. we didn't want to argue the project. I don't know the we is. I'm not me and Jim are on our team, but yeah. I don't think Jim's prepared to talk about the project in detail. And I think you're giving him great advice, but I, but I, but he's asking to do exactly what you're doing, but to present you with some plan. He wants to do a working session. You can do you you can submit a plan you can submit a narrative it's it's you know you, oh, you you just come in and talk whatever it is but we're more prepared he's more prepared so to talk about the, the as, particulars isn't is not fair as long as okay. as long as you understand that the that the extent of a working session can only it can only be as Good feedback to you as the data we get and the data we're able to verify. Well, that's the problem. So that's right, right? and so we're kind of, it's kind uh, of the chicken or the egg. That's the point, but, 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 but that's valuable so, information that you just provided, though, that would come out of a working session that you'd rather see something behind here. So then I can, if, if the applicant can come back and say, okay, we, the wetland is here, 
we talked here, the, the commission seemed more concerned about disturbing over here and less about over here, so we focused our area here and we've agreed to yeah. do this here. We're in, we're, I'm open to yeah. doing that. And, they, and just so, I mean, she also said that we also need to know what's going to happen beyond the point of disturbance, because that was something we talked about too. What, and it's not, it can't be a gray area. When you, when you come in, it's, this is what we need for our lives. The rest needs to be we're, never we're touched. Prepared, and again, or whatever that interns. I think that that's the area that comes out of a work. Yeah. We need to get a sense from you as to what will not not you're not telling us we'll approve it if you do this, but you know what you said about yeah, every 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 commission member has a different point of view. We need to get a sense for what those might be, yeah. so that we, my, my, my line of attack whenever I reference somebody is not to bring you problems, and this project has been a problem from the beginning, is to bring you a solution. What, what I want to have happen is at the end of this thing, that you're happy and he's happy because he gets to build something. I think we would have been there but for Tom going AWOL, and we're still, we haven't resolved that issue yet. But that all being said, if we could have a, maybe now that we've I've, I've approached this with you and you haven't thought about it in a while, quite at least a year or longer, maybe we can have that meeting with a couple of members to have a working session to, to try Did to you a, review anything that Tom did out in the field? He hasn't, he, that's what he hasn't given. He's told us, he has told us that he feels like the original line is pretty accurate, the, the Oxbow line. And he was provide. He's been out there multiple times, but that's what he's told us. And he said, "I just have a couple of hours to put the final report together, and you'll have it." Great. That's been going on since August. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the original Oxbow line. Is that the one that that's is? The blue line. This is this. The blue line. The blue line. I thought that was an incident. The what? Which I thought that was an incident. The Oxbow incident, have you seen it? Oh. 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 Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh. Yeah, so, so. Let's hang someone. <laughs> so, did you go out <laughs> with Tom? No. No. Tom has been working. Like uh, Tom. <laughs> Just kidding. No. On this project by himself. I, I only met Tom that one time, and, you know, we wanted to find out what was going on. If town was going to be sued, if we were going to be sued, yeah. that's, that's okay. Right. But then we found out that they were just going to submit another application. Now we have no way to stop someone from submitting an application. They can do it every day of the week if they right. felt like it. So this is going to come in, and you know it's going to, it may come in with Tom's information. I'm not sure. Maybe he doesn't have any. But um, we paid for it. But we're going to be looking at so this, and, and <laughs> it might make more sense to get something, you know, more finished from the on the first. Thing. So that's why we're talking about a working session and three weeks between now and our next meeting, and it's December and blah blah blah. You know, it's up to the commission. Do they want to say yes? Do you want to say it in between meetings? Do you want to say, hey, come to the next meeting and let's discuss it? We'll all be a little bit more prepared. I just, Whatever I just want, want it to, to be a productive session, and if we don't have. Uh, I'm just a little cautious about having a working session. I mean, if you want, if he wants to come in instead of calling it a working session, you know, feedback session or opinions from commission members. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, well, I, you know, are we back to square one? I, I, no, I, I don't think we can really step off even step one without having a, an agreement on the delineation of the wetland line. That's, yeah. this, this is where well, we're going what, again. It, it seems like that's an, an extra because obvious. I mean, it just, regardless of what we come up with, if that line moves yeah, to any degree, anything we discuss is moved. Well, that's what comes out in the working session. If you say, look, you have to do an ANRAD, we have to agree before we can even move forward, that's something that, that could come out. If you're adamant about that, he has to take that advice. He doesn't have to follow it. And, and again, Jim, this is not to be but, contentious. This is simply to save your effort and money. No, mm -hmm. yeah. 
Well, I think that's that what he was wanted to do. Anything it. that we're going to give him permission to do is going to be well, predicated on no, 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 the no, wetland it's, it's yeah. not. You don't give him permission. You say, look, well, when you come in here, I need to know what you're doing. I need to know the extent of the lawn. I would like to also see a landscaping plan. I want you to count all the trees. Mm -hmm. I need to know that. Um, you know, the area that you uh, are not using, we need you to tell us what you're going to do with that or, or is it going to be off limits in perpetuity. He takes those general statements and goes back and develops a plan where you see everything you talked about on the meeting. They're not going to talk about the wetland line. You can't. Okay? You can say, look, I'll be okay with a pool if you put it in the back of the house or you put it outside the 35 foot. Well, then they do that on the plan because they well, have a plan. Except they don't know where the 35 foot is. Well, well wait a minute. Every, every initial order of conditions, uh, notice of intent comes in with a, a wetland line delineated by somebody. We do have to approve it. He's not doing anything different than that first okay, step that right, everyone gets. One already exists. So he could put his pool based on his consultant's 35 foot line. He could do that. And then we go out and evaluate it and, and whatnot. I mean, there's a lot of apprehension around the, the Oxbow line, even though it was, it was you know, you just told us that Tom thought it was accurate. I think you're going to get a lot of pushback if you want to go with that line. But well, let me ask you this question. And this is all just if, if you have Oxbow did, did their wetland delineation, and then the state came and DEP did theirs, and Tom did his, and they all are pretty much the same. At what point does this guy have to keep proving that the line might be accurate, and you know that your interpretation may not? for the sake of this discussion. I mean, it seems I think, to me... I think we're exactly where we were at one of our meetings. We did say we'd like to have third party review. We would like to pick three companies that uh, w we felt were qualified to, to well, do this. Tom's qualified. He's worked on behalf of the town. Certainly the DEP is. DEP's qualified. <laughs> well, <laughs> you would have known. Uh, well, well, we no, had no. issues. We I'm had sorry. Issues I, if, you're, if you're a resident of the town, yeah. we had some, issues with that. They, they should be, and they go out and hire a licensed environmental consultant. I, you know, I get it. I'm a lawyer. There's good ones, there's bad ones. I understand. But if you hire a licensed consultant that's licensed by the state, he says X, and then the state says he's right, and then the, another guy comes in and says, I think they're both right. I mean, at some point you have to say, I mean, you know, this gets a little bit, you start to wonder, why do we keep going back after this guy and say, it's long, long, long. Well, we don't actually have three people. So, well, we do. We have the state. So we have the bill manual line, which the commission was more uh, in tune with. And then we have three Oxbow. additional attempts with Oxbow. Oxbow is not known as well in scientists. They may have changed their plans since then. I don't know the person that did it. Tom Hughes is not known first and foremost as a wetland scientist, all right? Only Bill Manuel stands as first and foremost a wetland scientist, and he had the most aggressive line. So that's what the problem is. If you're comparing apples to apples, you have not given us another apple to compare Bill Manuel's line with, and you need uh, to... Well, Bill Manuel should not be the uh, measurement stick, though. Bill Manuel is a wetland scientist. Yeah, but DEP is the, you know, they're the organization. Mike Abel is not, his background is not soil science. Is it possible that you know too much, though, Chuck, respectfully? I mean... We're only asking you that you get a soil scientist out there to evaluate the soil. Well, Tom Hughes is a soil scientist. He is not. He's a soil scientist so in Massachusetts. But, right. So, so am I. And so is my milkman, okay? So, so that's what we're asking for. We wanted an apple and apple comparison. We're well, apple and apple to what? I mean, that's just the problem. You need another soil scientist if, who's qualified. In your mind, right? But that's well, not in the commission's mind. I hope you meant yours, as in. Well, I don't. Yeah, but I don't know if the commission shares. You know, and it's, does the commission share my view? I do. I knew this. I don't know, Tom. So we have three so far. I didn't I, say I, I agreed. Actually, I actually was 
was in between the the manual line and the oxbow line. Yeah. So I I was and that would be and maybe and I had yeah, issues with the manual session. line. I did too on some parts on of it. Parts and a part on of parts of it. Parts of it. Okay. But not the all point of it. would be not maybe all. we can come to some kind of compromise out of that. I mean, I'm not again the, the whole goal here is to get this off your plate and get this off my client's plate. Forward. Well, if I may, just as, for the sake of moving this forward, which rather than try to push on a rope, the issues are least great behind the house, or least concerned behind the house. If that line moves at all, it doesn't move significantly that would prevent moving forward with a reasonable There's plan. a 35 foot line behind the okay, house. Okay, but, but, but I guess we think that's relatively accurate for all the lines that have been drawn. And the problem is, Anika says, is on the north side of the house. Correct. So, can we do the, the thing in stages, or do you that's do that? That's the point. That we're perfectly. If we were to agree, is that, if we have box doors lines, Bill know, Manuel's lines at the parts that they agree, both Bill Manuel and Oxbow. If we couldn't say we can accept that and play around that, I know you can't per se. No, Bill Manuel didn't go. I don't think he went that far up there. I think he didn't. He do mostly right here. I would have to look at the file. It's yeah. been a while, and there's been a lot of different arguments yeah. back and forth. I would have to look. Did we at have the much of an again. issue with this piece in here? I don't think we did. It was here. And even up there, remember? When you say here and there, I can't see what you're pointing at. Are you talking about the north side of the house? I'm talking about the east side, right in back of the house. east side is right in back of the house? Yep. Okay. You, you, you didn't have an issue there. You had a, you had it was all the line through here. And Correct. Remember, you, there were even blueberry bushes up here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple. But so, and then there was... Uh, just to be clear, the issue was on the couple. north side? It was, yeah. The, the compass the other, or the north yes, side? Yes, the north side. There were actually ferns that were within 18 feet of the road. Yeah. There was, there was a lot of inconsistencies there. I no. mean, it was, it was a, I'm not suggesting there weren't. I'm not, I wasn't there. I'm, I, I believe every one of you. All I'm trying that to say thing is that went way you up. and I are trying to establish consistencies. That's I don't I remember it having a continuity, yeah, though. There, there was crap up there. There was, I mean, yeah. There was, there was, there was a lot of issues yeah. right yeah. in here. Yeah. 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 I do remember that. But but even like even, even when he does, he had That's not standing, standing water. water. Standing water. I know. Do do That's what they want to do with this. Can we approve so, a so wetland line? Only during a permit. It has to be in an ANRAD or a notice of intent. Or a notice of intent. I mean, you certainly could yet. accept the wetland line to a certain point. Right. And. You know, see like if that if we can met compromise. our regulations somehow. To, I, I would to, not want to do, do that tonight, though. I mm. would only want to do that with a plan and after a site walk. Because and I mean, not to say just because I don't disagree with you. Just and because. All my so my response I've been is, so when many can places. we do that? Can, let me just get this straight. Are you. From what you said a little while ago, are you saying that he, he can come in with an NOI and then have an in right after the NOI? No. No, you, did, no. you, you, you a notice of intent, you'd have a what oh, line you, and you either... Are you talking about that not. they can just keep giving, uh, applying? Right. They can. Okay. You want you to not, you can, you can, they can reapply. We don't have, uh, like, the zoning board, yeah, you have to wait two years, two years or something right. like well, that. And, and we don't have any regulations like that. So we can, we can, he can do an... NOI, and then after we approve the wetland line, then he could adjust his NOI predicated on the accepted wetland line. So that would be an, an ORAD. So he could he could do that if he wanted to do that. I mean, you usually start a notice of it. The only reason why you would do an ORAD or an ANRAD, ANRAD. is so you could figure out where you were going to build your house or put your pool right. in. Right. But it is an additional expense and step, so right. that's why the notice of intent process combines both of them yeah, together. Okay. So, you know, obviously you could say, look, we want to get the line done first before we know what you're talking about, but it is more valuable to understand the project the, the project with the, okay. with the well and, line. And to, to that end, it's also easier for us to understand, to, give, to present, present to you a project if we understand what line, based upon that we have three, possibly four coming. If get a set, if you're if you're telling me that the line behind the where manual gave you concern was when it got to that open lane on the side of the house. If we leave that alone, 
focus on that back area, and then come up with some kind of, you know, um, commitment or conditions that we're willing to accept relative to the side yard. Maybe we have something that we can work on. Maybe. That's maybe. 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 Now, now we're going through the same thing. We're going to be, you know, the vegetation's all died back. The, yep. The ground's going to be frozen, so we're going to be back to where we were last spring. Well, we are, we are where we were a year ago. To, yeah, but as far as, but again, the difference is we have lines. You know, if, if, the, if that's what I'm saying, the weather right now doesn't, it doesn't matter if, if, if what I'm hearing is the board, the commission's concern is the, the, the land to that side of the house as opposed to the back. Right. So, but you had said that one of the things that the, the applicant wanted to do was to fill the side uh, yard maybe, that, but and make but, a lawn. But then maybe that's where I say that's not going to happen. Right. Okay. That's well, my point. I don't think any of us before had a problem with because I did hear one time before that the pool was going to go in behind the house, and I don't think we had a problem with that pool. Was that. was everything that was on the side of the house. That's what I remember. Okay. So we could review some landscape plans. Would push, would help, right? Oh. I guess I'm kind of I, I've said it all. I mean, Anika keeps pushing for like a full filing, and we're trying to do a working no, session. I, no, I'm not pushing for a full. But filing. you're asking for information, and that's not what a working session is. And that's that's kind of what I'm representing here. It's going to be okay. kind of conceptual, and it's it's going to be you know you know shot from the hip, I guess. But as there's going to be some valuable information that comes out of it, if you want to do it. Or you can just say, look, we're not even into it, and then you get a file. Well, that that, that doesn't file in the open meeting law, does it? Well, if we had a quorum, yeah, we, we would we advertise it. You know, yeah. We would put in we an agenda. Working. It's not good. Yeah. A lot. Well, I didn't know if it was going to be like a sidebar thing that would yeah, just, just kind of kick the side there around and then come to the commission and say, here's what we kind of, to be more prepared for, for next December? Or if it, I just try to understand how it works. So uh, you could do a meeting with the chair as long as there's not a quorum that shows up. It's not. It's not an open meeting law problem. I actually just called them, uh, so I could do it with the chair. Three of us could show up. We have we'll seven. We have yep. six people on the commission now, so a quorum of six. No matter what, is what they told me in the state. Yeah, not that's not what the state says, and I have always agreed with you. But you can call them but up I thought, too. I, thought I know it was, it's no, just, I thought, this yeah. is the newest information, but I didn't. I was looking I at something else, and he just said it's a quorum of what you. Have. So it's a quorum of what you. Have. I don't think that's settled, but as long not, as less than four people show up, right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't want to go in. There. We so. You can't all but to just about, make sure we could, that's what the state tells you. we could, we could just, we could just make an agenda. It would be fine. So we have I just, just want to make sure right? that, that cover when, all bases. The, when the prospective, you know, resident comes in to have these discussions, understand with a big disclaimer that whatever's discussed. Look, in that meeting is you. all is open to revision I'm, and feedback I'm, to yeah, the rest of the commission in the public. Yeah, it's conceptual for the public. Do you know what I mean? serving the zoning board in Dedham as the chairman. I, I, I've done these. I know where you're coming from. So I mean, you I'm have not working it's session be at the next regular meeting. Okay. I mean, that would solve that. Then everybody would know to... And we have done that for, for property well, owners. And Tom might be here. Previously. Yeah. There you go. Well, so they can come well, December 12th and yeah, discuss like this issue. All right. Okay. Okay, let's move right. on. And yeah. So just, I, I apologize. Not, um, for the, our purposes of that next meeting, now that it's going to be an open forum, are you looking for him to present a plan? Is this just a conversation, or do you want to see? Plans? What would you? I, I would hope it's just a conversation. Conversation. Yeah, um, I would too. I, I mean, think what, you know, loose. cobble together everything you can to help us understand your project, and you got a little bit of feedback tonight, and uh, come on in, and it's probably going to be a little more of the same. And what would be the goal coming out of that? 
I don't know. It just sometimes the commission doesn't have a goal, and you guys might have more direction on how you want the final plan to look. Well, I think I've gotten a lot of that tonight, just based upon it. I'm not saying that. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm not suggesting we don't need to do what we're doing on the 12th. I'm just trying to get a sense for, you know, I'm trying to create momentum to get this thing across the finish line. So, so can we, talk about it. Well, I can we, we conceptualize on a north portion of the property line in the wetland? Can there be a bullet point on the discussion, a goal to... I mean, we can review, review. what is typically can we, can we do a permitted in, on any project. You know do, what I mean? We have, can talk about... Do you have a... I don't know if I've ever seen the manual line. Uh, do, you, do you still have that? Yeah. Is that I'm sure Matt has it. Matt has it? Yeah. All right, but I, if not, just contact me. I'll, okay. It might take me a bit. Maybe what we'll do is... We'll, it'd be, Better certain if I'm more educated about what the manual line looks like, get a sense for where it shuts out. You're not going to like it. I'm sure. I'm going to tell you right now. No, but I mean, it sounds like at one point it, it maybe it doesn't match or comes close to matching. I don't know. No. I don't think it matches at all. No. no it has some very odd. I think he's in the lawn in the back of the house. Not in the lawn, not in the back of the house. It's on no. that side, and it has some very strange jogs. Mm. Well, it was such an odd area. It was really, it was not a simple, it was not a simple, here comes the slope, there's the wetlands, here's, the, here's where the line definitely needs to go. It was a hummocky area, vegetation had been cut, it was saturated. How do we make a motion? You know, it was, it was, it was a complicated area. So maybe it's if, just if, if the the that the state's yeah. line and Oxbow's line, okay. if we... Get rid of certain considerations, but all of a sudden becomes something that could be workable. No, no, I don't know. What, what do you guys say? I mean, I, I always I follow well, that because it's a wetland science. So, in, I mean, in a typical permit, we if we get a permit with a wetlands line on it, we will do a site visit and go flag by flag by flag as to point by point by point whether um, the commission agrees, disagrees. Um, you know, and what are the reasons? And you know, it's always good do to the have the person who ha did the delineation. You do out the exploration. There. We bring that information back so that it can actually be discussed in public. And I don't get the impression though, that. that Bill Manuel's line is. You seem to see it as that's the line because Bill Manuel is a wetland scientist, and I trust him. No, no, no. I don't want to say that I don't that's think the that, line. I just said these the guys can. You're not getting it from me. These that's my point. Yeah, uh, uh, parts of it, yes. Parts of it, no. No, and I, I, I know this guy you're talking about, and, and that did, that was crazy, but okay. But all in all, Bill Manuel came out with a different line, and then what we, what the two people that came out that fought against it, or the three, now, I just, I just but don't think they're at the same caliber as as Bill. I mean, oh, as far as wetland scientists go. But, but not, not to, and I'll say this for now, but the, the three people that did are licensed to come up with what they came There's, up with. They don't have a license. If they could show me their license, I would I would, dis, I would agree. Well, they're authorized. But you, I mean, no, we well, just... Well, it's, it, it's not me. I'm not going out there and saying, here's the line. These people are doing this for other cities. nothing to call yourself a wetland scientist in Massachusetts. There's no test. Yeah, okay. But, you know, as a, as, as for the applicant, he's you know, calls up an environmental consultant that's allowed to do this work for a DP. I mean, that there is a know. national mm -hmm. um, certification. So, yeah, I'm just, in, and I've been around a long time. I've man. seen Tom in several different spots, and I've seen Oxbow in several different spots. I probably have 10 meetings with Oxbow in different towns, and I probably have like four or five with Tom, okay? Now, maybe that's where it comes from. But, but Tom has been hired by this town to represent them on certain things, correct? Yeah, I think we hired him. Right, but my so as a, then I think that's why Matt hired him because he was like, well, this guy has worked with the town, so he's worked on behalf of the town. This would be a good guy for me to get. I mean, and, and he does do this work for other cities and towns, so we gotta find him. But that's neither here nor there. But I appreciate. I'll give you a call. Um, she. I think BSC, some wetland scientists over there would be good. I think this is getting expensive for this kid. 
He's paid Oxbow, he's paid Tom, he's gone to the state. He's just, you know, this isn't Rockefeller we're talking about here. No, it's not. But we asked him to go and get somebody who was qualified. And he thinks, he I think he did. Tom. I think he did, though. I'm not going to hang my hat on that. He has to. If he chooses not to take our advice and go on his own, and he made a mistake, so or he bought, got someone who didn't other. show up, that's not my you, problem. I mean, we I'm still problem. asking the, the commission, same question. The commission. I don't necessarily know. Well, I think you got to look at the totality of the record here. And, you know, my guy has tried to do the right thing. No, I agree. I mean, I mean it's it's a. You came in and said, "Boy, this is a this has been a problem site, and it's unfortunate of all these little stumbles that have happened here. We should have got this done." So any movement, I I want, but I just want you to know that you know, obviously, there's a sticking point, and it's come up several times. Well, the line's a sticking point, but yeah. But at the same time, if we if, if I can get if Tom Hughes says what we think he's going to say, and there's three I guess manuals line which we think that parts of it might be crazy. It would seem to me that at some point we have to say, okay, now let's sit, let's let's have a line and let's see if we can work something out with the applicant to see if he can accomplish something that he wants to accomplish and we can address something that we want to address. And maybe he wants the pool in the back and we don't want him to touch the side. Maybe we can come to a decision that accomplishes both those things. And everyone goes away happy and we don't have to talk anymore about crazy lines or who's a wetland scientist and who isn't. That would be my goal. Well, as you can tell, the, the sticking point is where's the line? Yeah, right. Yeah. That's the but sticking point, point for everybody I mean, is where's the line? It and, can't be. And that. The line is when we agree it's the line, and you just keep hiring someone until we like the guy you hire. That, that's a little bit. You know, we like. We go, I, so it's not about liking. It's about it's about a complicated wetland area. Yeah. That is difficult to delineate. Seven people and said the line's wrong. You've only come up with three. Who's so the seven? The commission. I don't know about that. I haven't come. So. They denied the project. Yeah, the, you, there's new members now. Uh, uh, except but the previous oh, really no. stood. You, so. said you told me that. There, there are new members, but we're talking about the lines. The people that were on the commission at that point disagreed with the line, and that was the well, initial stumbling point. I, I, I agree there was a disagreement. I, I'm not suggesting there wasn't, or that you've made it up, but... You know, I think that, but at some point, if, if you have a line and you have um, the state say the line is the, that, that's the line. We have expertise on this commission. I'm not suggesting And that's no, why we don't process. agree with the state. I'm not saying you should, but my point <laughs> is there is a process. He followed part of it, didn't complete the process. Yeah. So uh, that's, I mean, the, 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 that's what the, the problem is to question what was going on during the DEP site visit. It just seemed. Uh, wrong. I might even stretch to say it might it might have even seemed unnatural. So, can I ask a question? I, I, and I, I think I wish I had the 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 Bill spring, Manuals, but we came back two months later, and lo and behold, it's not a wetland. I wish I had a uh, Bill Manuals line delineation in front of me, but. Correct me if I'm wrong, but if they if he wanted to just put a pool in the backyard, predicated on Manuel's line, he'd be able to do it, right? Well, we need to see Manuel's line, but I don't remember exactly what it looked like. Well, but I know that I'm so looking at the lawn in the back. So we'll review the right. information. If it were in the back of the house, the back yes. of the house, I think we not. I think we'd have to do two <laughs> things. Not to the side. We see we'd multiple have to permits allow the pool every two weeks, and then and then allow the fact that he's putting Over a pool here. on existing you lawn. Know, right. I do. I do. It doesn't have anything to do with the lawn lines. I think that would stop it. Lines and how they matched up. So. I don't think or did I think there's an area for the pool and for this whole project. I, I, did, I think was, that he didn't do it. The manual didn't go there. You know, we just need to see what they come up with with some yep. of the feedback that we have given them. It, and it doesn't have to be in the backyard. It, it, you know, it's certainly because I, I think you said that the, he's got kids and they need to run around. I think if the pool's in the backyard and we're not developing the side yard, well, what's left? Right. You know? Right. Okay. So, right. I don't know so if you got the answers uh, to the questions well, no, no, you no, had. No, no, this has been helpful. I appreciate it. I don't you know, take up too much of your time here. I'm taking up too much. But, so is, just some, am I coming back here on December 12th? Are we going to discuss this next December 12th? Well, if you feel like I'll it would be. If you, feel, uh, I, if you feel like it. Well, I definitely want to have a conversation, another one, and I want to bring him in. But my point is, does it make sense to have this 
on a Tuesday at 10 o'clock in the morning, or is it? Do we do this? At well, I don't think all. I think all the members would like to be involved, okay. and they would feel like they didn't get to voice their opinion if it wasn't. So it needs to be at a meeting. That's oh, what I, I heard. Mm -hmm. I know. Is that? Okay. And there's a lot of them that can't be at a morning meeting. That's. I'm yeah. not. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to avoid having you guys have to be here till 10 o'clock at night next time and do this all. Here we do this all the time. I'm with you. I hear you, but I just. You know, Everyone's different, so I just want to make sure before I leave that I don't I haven't done something you don't want to do. So we'll so we'll be back here December twelfth. Send us the information a week prior to the or a little more than a week. So the Wednesday can before we, can, the meeting. Can we make it an agenda item? It will be an agenda item? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, so we'll be on a we'll, we'll have a specific time. Yeah. Okay. So if, yeah, and if let's you have, have some information review. What's that? So let us have some of the information. Yeah, I might, what I might do, Chuck, is call you. Maybe I'll come in and, and go through some stuff with you before. Just, is that, that's okay. I mean, does that make sure. sense? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to do this right. I don't want to, you know, want to make sure we're all on the same page going forward here. And if we disagree, we disagree. But everyone's looking at the same time. Okay. Right. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. <coughs> See you. Safe travels home. Have a good day. You too. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next item on the agenda is the fee waiver request for Reading Softball Little League. And Bob, uh, oh, let me write that. <laughs> Bob Hayes recuses himself. Recused himself. He's in the audience. Oh, he is our audience. Okay, yes, I saw this letter. Um, what was the fee amount? It's fifty. It's a my. It's a my. I'm just curious. It's fifty dollars. My project current. It's fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Yeah. And what was the limited work scope? We're trying to get the. There's actually. What's the scope of work? By the strictest interpretation of what we're doing, there's really no need for the limited work permit. This all took it down from a letter that was written from the fair committee. Try to cover all bases as a show of good faith to say we were covering all of our bases. We said, hey, even if we don't need it, we'll apply for it. But I think technically, Chuck and I looked at this and looked at several different reports and said, yeah, this is really outside the 100 foot line. Okay, this is at Sturgis. And it's at Sturgis. And you want me to tell them about yeah, you want to go through it? I'll just, just give it a quick review. It doesn't and have then, to be uh, a big deal, but just a little explanation of the work. Well, I want you to see what we're doing because we're yeah. proud of the project. Let me help you make this better. No, I can do it. There you go. Yeah. So what do you want uh, to say? It doesn't just put a slide up there, huh? Uh, yeah, Mike's not here, the uh, technical... Uh, what technical about... Uh, can well, I can give you an overview. I mean, just, you saw the, the title page, right? Uh, Slideshow? Slideshow. Is there one site plan that shows everything? Uh, yeah, there was. Why don't you just go to that? All right. Well, because you won't be able to see it. Then I'll go for this script. Yeah. I've, I've got a... Go for it. No, wait, you don't need to go through the script, I don't think. It, it, Oh, right. Can we talk about the, the resource area check first that that really is basically an intermittent stream? Yeah. So the work there okay. we go. Here we go. Thank you. This, okay. This, gotcha. this intermittent stream is like over here somewhere. Yep. And it trickles down I guess is a stone drain down into the holding area for yeah. retention ponds. This is like two hundred feet to right here. But because it's an intermittent stream, there's a hundred foot buffer zone. All we're doing is replacing the existing backstop with a new backstop, chain link dugouts, a little more safety fence, and some poured cement concrete cat pads for the eight by eight, 28 foot dugouts. With some benches for the girls to sit on. This is for Reading Softball Little League, by the way. In case all, you don't know, I'm the president of the league. We started it two years ago. And as best I can, because you got to snip a picture and you got to put in what you can in a PowerPoint. There's really no way to make this exact, but this is very close to exact in scale relative to this being 20 feet, this being 60 feet. That, that's first base, uh, third base. 
this yeah. movie here. So it's really, it's, it's a very good representative picture from an aerial view as to what this is like. This is for the sake of the recreation credit because we had to work with their wishes of the soccer, Reading Youth Soccer. So we've actually moved this fence back so that it doesn't come past for a space to, so they can use the field for practice unencumbered by the fence, and we never had an issue with their, their playing field as it is. So I'm going to draw on the screen right now. We have the 200 foot, if one existed, this is if one existed, where it would be. So 200 feet is. Um, Came right through the dugout. Yeah. Right here. So this is. This is that's why it's a minor project permit. Because if if it's a perennial stream, not stream, not into ministry, which apparently it's not. So half a dugout um, that isn't even dug in. So well, these are both slab. Slab. We got you know dig. Some under, what you under mean, like, like, like like nine or ten inches of. We're gonna dig in a, a yeah. two foot hole. It's gonna have reinforcement wiring so it doesn't crack. The yep. poles for the dugout are going to be buried. I don't show it in this here, but this is all being built in concert with the engineering department. We spent a lot of time with. We're using their their fence and gate and, and backstop requirements and specifications. So this is all being built to their specifications. These will be 18 inch wide sonnet tubes, buried four feet with a receiver to take the pole the poles. It'll then become covered with two inch six gauge black vinyl heat bonded chain link fence. State of the art. It's going to be 20 feet if you want to see what it should look like when we're done. And you'll recognize the picture if you go to the next slide, Chuck. This is Morton Field. Um, this was an artist concept, and I steal with pride, hope you don't mind, from somebody else's PowerPoint when they presented this. All we've done is we've taken the 16 feet of fence out and moved the dugouts right up against the, the, the backstop. The backstop, just like this, is three panels, 16 feet by 24 feet high. And that's it. The roof, the roof of the dugout is going to be made out of two by ten headers, all pressure treated, two by six, 16 on center roof rafters, one by three strapping run, 12 inches of pipe, the full length of the dugout, and then corrugated steel roofing on top. Identical to the dugouts that are built down at Simon Street and Montfield. We had a meeting last night, by the way, for recreation, a special meeting to invite the public in. And Valerie, who lives right across the street, who's become a good friend of ours, it's a, it's a, it's a relationship that I've worked to develop with her. She's a sweetheart of a lady. And I don't know if anybody knows Leslie McGonagall. She owns the gymnastics club and running or something. She's lived right there for years. This stuff is all located about right here. The existing fence, and I apologize for not having a picture for it, is a very poorly, improperly constructed, welded, galvanized fence. And the supports that hold the awning up are underneath the awning. We're not putting up an awning. We're just putting up a straight 24-foot back wall. The fence, I mean, it's dangerous. You, the girl at bat hits foul ball off the poles that ricochets back into the umpire, catcher, batter. It's just kind of stupid. It's just, it's way overdue. And so that you should know, this is 100% funded by the league, bringing softball to the league, with some of our supporters. And this is being gifted to the town of Reading, so we're doing this for free. So the land between the, the um, benches and the intermittent stream, relatively flat. Oh, flat as a blue tail, yes. Yeah, yeah. and then it just kind of dips the closer you get to. I think there's a depression the closer you get to the well, stream. Well, it's not, like I tell you what, it's, it's not much of one because for years, kids were running out of here and in the woods to relieve themselves. We, When we started the league, we started getting, I'm dead serious, we started, we got a porta potty and put it next to the tennis courts. <clears throat> Another thing just to enhance the attraction of the project, by the way, this is approved last night by the rec committee and it was reported to the select board that had already accepted our gift under the proviso that the rec committee accepted it. They signed the building permit today. We're also fixing all of the chain link fence that surrounds the tennis court and the basketball court because it's all curled up and it's kind of a hazard. So we're putting in additional st uh, structural numbers and pulling the fence down, straightening it, and, and, and recinching it to the pole. For the all right. So let's find out why it's not under our jurisdiction. But we took this, we took 
took this uh, step to give it a minor project permit. So Bob gave me a call and he said, what do you think about this project? And I said, let me just put it through our typical review. So we have a stream and we need to figure out if it's perennial or intermittent. So what I did is I ran stream stats on it and stream stats ends up giving you a pointer. When you put it up here, it comes up intermittent. When you put it down here, it's perennial. There is an underground, it shows on stream stats, there is an underground pipe coming into it about there, which adds a watershed and brings it over that. All the drainage and, Yeah. So, in that, all that paperwork's in, my, in the office under the file name, but it, it is kind of ironic that up here, so, um, and then down through here, South Street, becomes a perennial stream. I'm not sure if there's any. Um, I'm not sure if there's any study in Reading that's been done on that part of the stream. But I look back into the uh, orders of conditions and RDAs that have been on this site, and there's four, and three of the four call it intermittent. So interesting. Yeah, it is. <laughs> what was the fourth the one? The projects good, were good all down correct. in this area. Oh, okay. This there's going to be a repair by DEP a DE, DPW yeah. on the stream yeah. here. Yeah. And then we had the playground yeah. here. And that's two of them and the other two I can't remember yeah. what they were. So there was um, one in the house across South Street. Maybe there's yeah, there was a house there's a house up here. And to the right of the stream yeah. too. I don't think we made a determination based on that house. So, so that's that's why uh, it's not. So you basically, you Bob, we didn't need to file. Well, I didn't think we did. Chuck and I discussed this, and I thought, well, what's the harm of doing it? At least it's something that because nobody can ever accuse us and say you didn't go to conservation. I, I can say absolutely we did. The line is so close that yeah. we wanted to be, you know. Just to cover all the <laughs> cover all the bases. Cover all bases. Yeah. Hey, that's, there you that's go. That's the phrase for this. <laughs> so <laughs> I have no problem. Uh, uh, yeah, you guys did wavering or uh, uh, waving the waving the the, the, fee. the fee. I agree. Me too. Well, and I I thank you very much, and I'm happy to report that the building permit that we got as a community project for over six feet of fence or higher was there's no there's no fee there. I got a dump permit that'll I mean a dumpster permit that will be delivered um, and there's a there's a $40 fee for that that I get filled out today they waived that fee the Board of Health did so I mean we have been trying to this is a very visible project everybody from Bob Alasha you know to DPW and and everybody in between you know, I mean, it's, it's did you have to go to the Board of Health meeting to have that waived or did they just do it at no, the office? No, just down the counter told them it was all about it. They said, oh, it's a, it's a, and Kim was there. Kim, the building department, the building department, she said, no, no, she goes, this is, yeah, this is a non-profit. She's going to waive the, the dumps and thing. Like, the young lady said, fine. So, okay. Do I hear a motion, too? I make a motion to waive the, uh, the fee for the Reading Youth Softball League. A second. All those in favor. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. Bob, who does who does the installation? Is it the gentleman who's on our board, named Tim Higgins, works for a company called New Roads Environmental. Mm -hmm. He's the environmental president of that Wait. one of several okay. branches of that company, and they have a construction arm that owns a fencing company. We bought all the materials so far. It's about thirteen thousand dollars wow. of materials. They're going to donate all the labor. That's cool. And all the, the the equipment required to pull up the old stuff, get rid of it, yeah. put the new stuff in place. Yeah, it's a decent job. We have a local, we have a local contractor here in town, they run Iapica, who's doing all the footings and the pads. Wow. So. Chuck, MACC dues? I just bring your attention to the, they're going up again. And, you know, the. It would be nice uh, to, to kind of get the bang for the buck with those dues. You probably should start going to the uh, annual environmental conference yeah. and picking out some topic that they feel interested in and and, and, and going. That's when you get the most out of it. Um, Where's that? 
March. March, yeah. It's like the yeah, second weekend in March. First. It's the first? It's the first last Saturday. year. Nope. I wasn't hobbling Set around Holy, Holy Cross on crutches. That wasn't Worcester. happening. Worcester. Yeah, it's, it's a high hill, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Is anyone going? Are we going? Well, when they come out, uh, they'll come out with some information. I'll we send it out the, to the commission. Yeah. We get the court. The, you get an option to pick which yeah. oh. um, talks you want to go to or units. There's mm -hmm. also a unit certification program. Interesting. <clears throat> It's a worthwhile day. Well, as you say, that sounds kind of cool. You get to meet with vendors yeah. from Storm Scepter and all sorts of erosion All kinds of stuff they give away. Yeah, when I went for work for MACC, I used to tell them, I go, it's just because we're so busy, we don't get any of the graft, right? So I used to tell the everyone that we should ask the vendors that are there that they should put like seven baskets together for everyone that works at MACC so they would always get something. Yeah. So. Yeah. Isn't it that you, you get there first? Even when we so, got there first, we would get nothing. Really? It, yeah, I I never came out with with anything, um, well, a pencil or something. But but. Love rubber ducky. I remember giving those away. I got to tell you, the environmental crowd is a is a thrifty crowd. <laughs> Don't, I don't know. It's, don't it's put worth free it. in just front of your uh, table because they're no. going to have a crowd. It's, it's worth it just for the Vernal Pool T-shirt, <laughs> the Spotted Salamander T-shirt. Yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Try, try to refrain Bob. from getting excited. <laughs> Do they have one that says I'm a descendant of a dodo bird or something? <laughs> so, I think we should take so a reading. I think we should take a dodo bird. I'm going to get another one. Now I'm going to put a sticker. No dumpster diving for the dumpster. We have to go to the just It was just an alert. They'll send out an invoice in the future. Yeah. All right. Minutes for approval. So we have five sets of minutes. And we have some revisions, which I would like you just to pass down, and I'll add that to them. I had some questions on some of the Do you need this to ask the questions? Uh, well, you'll have to. Some sentences didn't make sense to me. I'm only on one meeting minutes. The rest, I, I was okay. All right. Well, it looks like you have some. It's all good. All right. So, can I get a motion to accept? Um, the meeting minutes for Jesus, uh, August 8th, 2018. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? <laughs> horrible on that. And I, uh, second set would be uh, can I get a motion to approve July 25th, 2018? Well, so moved. Second. All those in favor? Can I get a motion to approve um, August 22nd, 2018? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Two more. And I Can I get a motion to approve October 24th, 2018? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? And can I get a motion to approve September 12th? Let me see if I did this right. 2018. Yep. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? That takes us to the. <coughs> we got five. Any, any comment? No, I, we did them all. I did three that you gave me and right. the two additional. Right. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> anything else? Um, I did take a look at. <coughs> There is a notice of project change for um, the uh, water supply to North Reading. Originally, it was going to go down Mill Street, and they were going to um, do a MWRA connection um, via Mill, Mill Street through Reading, Reading's um, system. However, when they filed the EIR, the draft, um, Andover took exception of some of the wording and the saying that Andover would never have been able to supply the needs for North Reading for the next 20 years. Um, then they did a couple studies and apparently I guess there is enough water from 
Andover that now they are going to connect to Andover in two locations. Don't ask me where they are. And um, the water supply isn't the Ipswich River. It's actually Haggett's Pond, which mm -hmm. is a 220 acre pond. And also they draw off from some brook as well as the Merrimack River. So that's where they're getting, and I guess they Merrimack could use River. it. Yeah, they chlorinate it. Oh. <coughs> um, well, you can actually eat that fish bad? out of the Merrimack River now. They, I mean, bot, I mean uh, biologists, marine biologists have said that they're safe to eat. Are you sure? Not to go on a side tangent, but I my buddy lives in Drake. It lives no, about I four miles down from the sewage treatment facility, and it's literally contaminated. That's on the Merrimack? Yep. Still, where is this? Drake it. Drake it. Hmm. So, we are I don't know if uh, we are not, not responsible for not the water quality. quality. <laughs> we can't uh, determine yeah. that here. Just, you know, we're Budweiser gets the water <laughs> for the Merrimack plant. Well, do you realize the, the, the Merrimack watershed controls the fresh water that they drink on Cape Cod? Imagine that. What's that? Wait, where does reading get out? Where's it's all the ground from? MWRA. MWRA. Yeah, from the quad. Which is the quad. Are you saying oh, that okay. the water from the Merrimack River watershed? The, the Merrimack River watershed <laughs> influences the, water. the, water, the groundwater level. It's been tables stop and Cape Cod. I would like to see that report. Me too. <laughs> I would too. I'll, I'll forward it to my friend. Was the <laughs> a friend of mine that went to school for that stuff Ugh. is told me that so in fact, I'll be, check it out he boats and water skis and for from August until now you know and it, it could be it's covering it could be wrong bases. I'm just he Dennis is always a pretty reliable source of information but I'd be extremely surprised so, anyway. so we don't have a, I guess skin in the game yeah. so with what Aunt May. <laughs> with the North, North Reading, Reading yeah. So oh yeah I, I didn't know yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I'm just reporting uh about it. Oh, man. So that means they're not going to be digging up Mill Street? That's right. Correct. Or, yeah, Mill. Which uh, is good because that would have required a stream crossing. Mm-hmm. Well. Because they were talking about directional drilling under it and they were talking about all sorts of crazy stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, that's not crazy. It would have been nice to... Well, it's... it's it would have been nice if they made that bridge on Mill no. Street about four feet wider when they built it. Yeah. I think, no other, I think no other writing was trying. <laughs> yeah. Not threading was dry. Trying. 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 Okay. Um, Not threading has never been dry. Chuck, are we going to do the uh, that uh, Oak Street? Are we signing off on that? Uh, like we find out about what was promised? Or I didn't have a chance to look into right. that, and I haven't heard from the owner again. So I think I'd like to push that off so okay. I have a okay. chance to check. So, do we have anything else to discuss? No, oh, I want to. I'm going to close. Yeah. Yeah. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Adjourn.